And we are now starting the regular monthly meeting of uh, the city of Cote St. Luke for Monday, June 11th, 2018. To my right, we have the city clerk, Frederic Macau, councillors David Torgman, we have Mike Cohen, Ruth Kovac, I'm your mayor, Mitchell Brownstein, councillors Dita Burku, Sidney Benizri, Mitch Kajavsky, and we have the associate city manager at the end, Jonathan Schechter. We have some more city managers coming forward. And I know that uh, Councillor Erdely is on his way. Okay. So for question period, the first questioner is Jeff Nashen. Good evening. Well, uh, Mayor Brownstein, City Council. I've lived in Cote St. Luke most of my life, which isn't too short a time. I never attended a public council meeting as I've never needed to express my opinion in this public forum at the, as the council has usually done what is right for the citizens, myself and my family included. In fact, the coat of arms for the city of Cote St. Luke has the motto, and I hope I pronounce it right, Civibus Meus, which is translated as for my citizens. But a recent event has prompted me to attend tonight's meeting and ask a question. My family lives on Emerson Road facing Mitchell Brownstein Park. We read recently about the Hebrew Academy's intention to enlarge their facility within their existing legally zoned footprint, which is well within their rights and as long as it conforms to city bylaws, as pointed out in the suburban article of May 9th. On Friday, two children who live in our neighborhood knocked on our door circulating a petition, and I believe these are the two young girls right here, and alerting us that the school is now looking at expanding their facilities on the south side of the school into the existing park. Any such expansion into city property would be problematic. It would cause increased traffic on our street. We already face many parents making an illegal right turn from Keller onto Emerson. Many elderly people are wheeled over to the park from Mount Sinai Hospital to sit and relax in the shade on the tree, under the trees on the east side of the park precisely in the intended site of this expansion. In a survey of residents of Emerson Avenue, we have found that not one family has expressed support for expansion into the park. In fact, many of the people from Emerson are here tonight because of, they are all quite upset. We are all alarmed by the effect on the property values of our homes, the damage to the beautiful environment where we have chosen to live, and the reduction of the play area where my children grew up, where the current neighborhood children play in the winter, and where the Hebrew Academy school children exercise and run throughout the year. Cote St. Luke fought very long and hard to preserve the green space of Meadowbrook. Cote St. Luke has been promoting the planting of trees in Trudeau Park for their 150 for 150 program, and Cote St. Luke should be doing the same for the parkland of Mitchell Brownstein Park. If the school needs to expand, this council must make sure that it does so on its own property. My question, finally, is the council, council actually entertaining any sale of public property to the Hebrew Academy in order for it to expand on the south side of what is, uh, what is the park? And specifically for my councillor, Mr. Benizri, do, uh, what are you doing to protect its, your citizens who live on Emerson Road and are heavily against any such expansion? How are issues like parking, noise, cleanliness being considered in the face of any expansion so as to maintain the high quality of life that our family and all our neighbors, neighbors have enjoyed for decades. Thank okay. you. So first of all, there is, um, we had a, a first public consultation on this issue and there will be a second one. Obviously the Emerson Street residents, I don't know if they were invited or if they weren't as interested, but they certainly will be invited to the next one. And any uh, modifications to the original plan that is now being submitted to the Planning Advisory Committee will then, if accepted by the Planning Advisory Committee and sent back to Council and approved, would only go to public consultation before we would approve it publicly. So we're not at that stage where we're finalizing a project. What we did do is we looked at their initial proposal. There were a lot of concerns. We had about, I don't know, 30, 40 people that came to that first meeting, residents of the neighborhood, and they, they voiced their concerns about where the garbage was being placed, where the parking was being placed, the shading. There are a lot of different concerns. So then we came up with, or they came up 
with another plan, which now is going through the same steps again and will again go to all of you neighbors to see it visually at a meeting right here um, and, and give your comments and then we'll see what other modifications are needed. So like the present right. plan right now does not provide the sale of any city land. We're maintaining ownership of all of our land. Um, the issue is where to put a parking lot um, that now exists on one side that they want to build on and the question is how to build that building in order to make it as aesthetically pleasing and not take away too much green space. If we, if we do build a parking lot next to that, um, next to the building as it exists today, it would be owned by the city, it would be a part of Mitchell Brownstein Park um, and they would have access to use it. But we don't know if we're doing that. It's just a proposal that's come to us and it requires, and there's a lot, a lot more issues that are being addressed in terms of what we would get in, in, in exchange for what we would be giving them. So we're really at, what at, at, we're at the preliminary stages. But if you're, I mean, you're, right now you're talking about something from a suburban article, which is nice and it's good, but it doesn't really give you the full picture. You're gonna have to come to the public consultation meeting, see the plans, see what's proposed, give your comments, and then if we have to go back to the drawing board, we will. You're just responding to, I, I, I love the kids. I want to hear them next. They, well, I'm sure they put their name in as they well, did. but if I understand what you just said, there already is some looking at building a parking lot on the south side of the building. That's the proposal. That's the latest proposal. But the that, latest isn't, proposal. that is in the park. What? That it's, is in the park. Yeah, it would be next to the building. But there's an, there's an exchange process. They're going to be building certain things that we would have access to. and we, it, it's, we'll, bring, we'll, we'll give the whole explanation at the public consultation meeting. They want to build a new gym and performing arts center, not new classrooms, not to bring more kids to the school, but to provide more facilities to the existing students. It's not an expansion in terms of classrooms. It's an expansion in terms of facilities. So they want to have a, a, a gym uh, that also is like a theater, uh, and that's what they want to build on one area of the school somehow, somewhere. And we will, and you too, will all work with them to try to make that dream a reality without causing imposition on the neighbors to the best of our ability. I hate to say it, but you sound like a politician. I am. <laughs> <laughs> You, you say on the one hand that there's, there's no consideration and then the other hand the city is going to, is considering put, making, the park, making a parking lot that the city will own. So you're saying on the one hand A and on the other hand B, you're just talking out of both no, sides I mean, of your mind. No, I mean we're not selling the land, it would be an exchange, but it's a proposal, it's a proposal. <laughs> sell it or not sell it, you're going to pave over green space. Yes, that's a proposal, if it, if it passes. Uh, I'm very uh, surprised Brooke. at this council, especially okay. after all that's been done about I, preserving I, green space. I, I, I'll let the uh, environmentalist so I, speak I, next. I, I don't know what kind of petition you received. I'd be curious to, to, well, to see Well, these young it. ladies have okay, it, so they'll okay. bring it up. Right, and I don't know where that's coming from, so I also... Be Maybe they know more than me. They go to the Maybe school. Maybe they do, because we haven't seen the, the, the proposal yet. We're, it's going to be presented to the PAC. The council, myself included, have not seen it yet. But you so I don't know. Had a first consultation. We no. Nobody I'll, spoke to us. Who lived we had a, most affected by. We it. had a consultation. We had a consultation, and over 30 people came. It was very well attended. Not Emerson. And oh, yeah, lots of people came from Emerson as well. And one of the and one of the proposals that came from that consultation was that we flip. The, the, the side on which the parking would be established because the residents were very concerned about a covered parking. Uh, some, of the, some of you who were at that meeting, the that was a constant, the other side correct, the because, it's because it was covered and they were very concerned about that. So that's one consideration. And then there were others. But until the council sees the plan, I think it's a little premature for us to start explaining you know, what uh, the Hebrew Academy is proposing, because we have to see it first, and once we see it, then we're going to have a consultation. I just discussed this with uh, Councilor Benintri. As soon as the PAC sees it, then the council will see it, and then we'll have a consultation, and then we will move forward. How will but we, we informed absolutely will be informed, How? as you were informed we'll last time. Didn't nobody, you? nobody sent anything to our house. There was no information. That I'm sorry, Emerson. we delivered letters. No. Daryl, no. Daryl is freaking. No. 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 I don't think Emerson will receive letters. Uh, no. 
I don't think I've ever said it. We're turning the party into a party lot. No, I don't the letters, think the letters were distributed within a radius. No, 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 no. So they didn't get letters. We'll make sure that they get letters. Next time, instead of 30 people, we hope to have 60. And we will all work on this together. But we had a first consultation. Don't think these things are easy to deal with. We had a sure first they consultation. They didn't like where the garbage was. They didn't like where the shading was. They didn't like the fact that the thieves or, or, or other individuals could go under uh, underneath the new the gym to the covered parking lot. And they were worried that there could be some vandalism or worse. So there were a lot of different concerns that were addressed, but obviously not all of your concerns. So we will have another consultation and your concerns will be addressed. And maybe their project won't go forward at all. But we are only at the stage where proposals are being made. So we will address them with you. And now I'm going to call Mimi Torchman and Leva. Let's see. Come forward. You can ask your question. And Leva Rachel Spitzer. Welcome. I think it's on the same issue. That's why I called you right after. But I want to hear it from the kids. So everybody, shh. Good evening, everyone, city councilors and Mayor Brownstein. My name is Miriam Torjman. And my name is Leva Vasquez Spitzer. And we are students from Hebrew Academy in grade six. And we both, we both live on Emerson Road. I happen to be David Torjman's daughter. But to clear things up, this was my idea. And when I heard of the project of cutting down trees, we were against it. So we came to present this because we are not against the project itself of expanding the school. In fact, we want to expand the school, but in another way that does not involve cutting down the trees, which is bad for the environment. I'm not an engineer like my dad, but I do have another thought of what the city can do instead of cutting down trees and building a parking lot. Like we can, also, we can make an underground parking lot instead. Thank you. That's great. And, and, and I want to let you know that one of the things that council suggested as an alternative was that underground parking lot, and we're not against it. It's a very good idea. Okay, so now I'd like to call upon Iona Hassan. Hello. Yep. Um, I don't know if you all remember me. I was oh, here last month. Well. <laughs> I guess you didn't forget. And I haven't forgotten you, just for those who weren't here. Um, I live behind the Adar parking lot. And for the second time, a, a car has driven through my house, through the fences and into my house. I was working in the garden at the time, and the car went right through the two fences and over the cement, and the wheels were hanging in my yard. And had I been there two seconds before I went in to get a cup of coffee, I had been there two seconds before the fence would, would have come down on top of me. So um, I've been trying to get, find out what's going on. I'm, I'm waiting for the insurance company. They're going to fix the fence. But my, my issue now is I'd like to make sure that there's going to be some kind of cement barriers in the back mm -hmm. to protect people, be, protect me in fact, because I know this has happened twice now and I know it's going to happen again. Yeah. The first thing that needs to be done, they need to remove the handicapped parking uh, sign from the fourth spot in, in, the, in the parking lot. It should be next to the door, not, not on the fence where in front of my house, <coughs> behind my house rather, um, because it seems that basically the issue is people, elderly people who press on the accelerator instead of pressing on the brakes. And they go through the fences and I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not hoping that there's gonna be a third time, but the third time they're gonna kill me. Right, let's hope not. Uh, thank you for coming again. I just wanna let you know, every time you come to a public meeting, your comments are minuted in our minutes and now they will be minuted again. I have meetings with staff about this and with our uh, director of legal services, Jonathan Schechter, today as well. And I would say that we should and we will write a, uh, a letter to Adar or to Adar's attorney informing them exactly what we have in our minutes, exactly as you told us, and putting them on notice that you have advised us of this danger. Now, now the problem is it is between a residence and a commerce. So 
we will do, I, I told them to look into anything legally that we can do, so we're gonna send that lawyer's letter and see what we can do to put them on notice so that they protect themselves because they're liable, obviously, if something happens. Well, and so it's in their best interest to take action. If they get a lawyer's letter from us, that's fine. I know you sent them a lawyer's letter. I think the next step is legal action. Well, the, actually, the city is responsible. It has a liability because my backyard, there's three feet of my backyard that belongs to the city. It's a, it's a lane. Right, but it's lower than the, like, from what I understand, that lane is lower than the Adar parking Yeah, but by there, there are feet? fences. Right, the, I, I, we could, I, but if we, right, there is a pr particular lane that we yeah, can Yeah, and the, the, the posts that their fence is sitting on are on city property. That I'm not sure about. Uh, I, I have pictures I can show you right now. If their fence is on city property, that would be an interesting thing to know, but have you verified that? Well, the, sure? the, the, the lane starts on the inside of, our, of my fence and their posts, because they didn't put them up properly, they didn't cement them into the, into the retaining wall when they were supposed to. They first put up the retaining wall and then they, they put the fence up three weeks later. So the posts are sitting in the sand on, on the inside of our, all along uh, our uh, property line. Right. Well, I don't know if it's on our, if anything's on our property, we can verify that to see, but the reality is when there's an issue between neighbors, there's limitations on what we can do as a council, but anything that we can do according to the law I want us to do. So that lawyer's letter is gonna go out and we're gonna see what we can do and force them to increase the safety and security of that area. And if we can do something <coughs> on our lane, then- the, the, the fence is coming down anyways. It's completely pushed into my yard and it's, it's not holding them to anything. I mean, it's a similar problem, I'm gonna say, I mean, it, it exists throughout the city. There was, I don't, people will remember when a, when a car drove into a swimming pool on Massel, yes. and the owners have now put up a big, big cement wall around their property. They did we look at the Cavendish Ella, Mall project, Bakery to we, have a, we have a parking lot in the Cavendish Mall with a lot of young, very with it drivers <laughs> that are parking right up to the fence of all those backyards. Yeah. So this is a problem that can happen in so many locations. And it's very important, I'm, I'm standing this on the record now because the owners of the mall should be aware to improve the safety and security of their neighbors. Adar should be aware, but in your particular case, since this has happened, we will send a legal letter. Twice. I know. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Monique Asulain. You don't have to give your address, no, no it's been taped. You don't make people give their address anymore, but right. we appreciate that you write it down. So on August 15, 2017, in the middle of the election campaign, the city of Kutzenluk issued a written statement about Kutzenluk Road that it was in the books for 2018, thanks to talks and the relationship built with the NDG mayor, Russell Copeman, and that the plans were in the works since 2015. A few weeks ago, I asked on the Kutzenluk Facebook page uh, group of Kutzenluk, when the work would begin since we were well into 2018 and I noticed work was being done on Kutzeluk Road above Dikari. The reply was that the work was postponed and I was told to take it up with Valérie Plante. I was also told that the city of Kutzeluk issued a letter to the NDG mayor. First of all, it's not my responsibility to take it up with Valérie Plante, but thanks for the vote of confidence. And here are my questions. Number one, why did the city of Kutzeluk accept that decision? Why weren't we told right away it's a big deal and we were only told because I asked a simple question on a Facebook group? What was the mayor of NDG's response to your letter? And what has been done by our city to develop real relationships with neighboring municipalities to push that work forward, to apply pressure to get results fast and for us, fight for us and for our cars? Yes. Okay, well, as we all know, both Russell Copeman and Denny Coderre are no longer there. And under the new administration of Valerie Plant, they have put off the Cavendish Road uh, repairs to 20... Road. Road to what is it, 2019 or 2020? 2020. 2020. 2020, I think. 2020. So they put off the, uh, the repairs, uh, or the, re the resurfacing completely, not the repairs. So we sent, so we did what we can. We have to remember, the city of Cote St. Luke is an independent city, and we take care of our city the best way that we can. And the city of Montreal will close 
the road over the mountain, and they will do all types of wonderful things, like impose a 3.3% tax increase uh, uh, after promising not to go beyond the rate of inflation. And the list can go on forever, although I am not going to be criticizing the plans. All I will say is that she is not the mayor of Cote St. Loup, and she does not tell us what to do, and we don't tell her what to do. So what we can do is have good relations, which I do. I do have a good relationship with Valerie Plant, and I do speak with her, and I have had Benoit Doré, who is the executive chair, come to Cote St. Loup for meetings, and I have had a um, uh, Mayor Montgomery come to Cote St. Loup for meetings, and I've written her letters and even sent her the video of how we do our potholes, and they have, believe it or not, done more on repairing the potholes in the street of Cote St. Loup Road than they have in the past. It's no beautiful road, but at least they're making an effort. And that's what she could control. Montgomery could control repairs on her road. She can't get the central city of Montreal to repave the road unless she has the ear of Mayor Plant the way Russell Copeman had with Denny Kadir, perhaps. She doesn't have that complete control. So she's doing what she can as borough mayor in terms of maintaining the road. And we have put our pressure on uh, Mr. Doré, who is executive chair, on the mayor of Montreal, and they have a lot of priorities. I would like to have a metro. I, I would like to have a train when station. When you apply pressure and the pressure is not being actually applied, yeah. then obviously the pressure is not working. Can't there be another solution? I'm not sure. It, not really. I mean, because they, if the plans were in the works since 20, yeah, but the plans were in the works. The, city of the plans were in the works since 2015. It's very hard to believe that those plans were cancelled at the last second and hush hush when it was a huge campaign hush -hush. promise. There's things happening all the time. Just to get elected. Anyway, that's my. It's not to get elected. I never, ever, ever said that I. The city would of Cote Luke issued a statement right after Robert Lippmann. That Lippin Russell Copeman said, not what we said. The city of Cote Luke issued it on their webpage. On Russell August Copeman's 15th. statement. Russell Copeman's statement is what so we So why is the city of Cote Luke issuing that statement? For because Russell there was a Copeman. question on the page about when it's going to be done. So Russell Copeman's statement. We asked Mr. Copeman. I called Mr. Copeman. I asked him for uh, an exact response. He gave it, and we posted it. Okay, so information, false information was posted, basically. It was correct at the time. He didn't get reelected, and neither did Mayor Kader. So why were certain things cancelled, slashed like that? Maybe they were not really in the works. Because of the trip cut. It has to do with the new administration make their priorities. Thank we you. have a whole transport plan that will be, will be presented tonight, uh, later, by Councillor Berkeley that deals with a lot of issues that we have. It's very nice they're building the ramp, but we have a lot of issues about crossing the carry. So we're, we're going to be presenting a, a statement on that. About Cote St. Luke Road, it's, it's not in our control. A lot of it is tied to the Turcot work that's being done and Sherbrooke Street, and until they finish certain works there, everything got delayed and pushed back, and that's what's holding us back. It's the last thing that we want, and we have tried. One of the first things we did when we got elected was meet with the NDG government and told them that this is the problem and this is what they had promised. But it's not something that they can control locally, even though it's what we wanted. And we do continue to, to, to pressure no, them. I understand, and I really would like to believe that. But when you see that the work is actually being done on Cote Luke Road, but not on our side, you have to wonder if it was actually in the works or not. That's it. That's just my thought. All I can say is I love when people ask me questions, but what I can do is mayor, not what I can't. And I really have no control over I understand, but when the city of Cote Luke issues a statement that is clear and concise, that was providing the one on August 15th. There was a request for information, so we got it from Montreal. Anytime you want information from Montreal, I'll get it from Montreal. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Rhoda Albert, please. Hi, this is going to be a surprise for Mike Cohn. I just want to compliment him on the meeting he had last Monday, which the... The, uh, um, uh, the developer? The lady, the police lady. Oh, yes. Sir. She was Maddie. amazing. Marie-Christine Nobert. And you know what, we should have more meetings like that. I think that was the first one that we ever had that gave us some information about what to do and what not to do. She was absolutely terrific. Thank so, you. Thank you. Thank you, Rhoda. Not that I sucked up. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, just so anyone who would like to know more about that meeting, you could, I summarized it on my blog at mikecohen.ca. I actually called her and left her a message that she was wonderful. She is. She's been, well, she's a treasure. I think we all agree. She, you know, we're very but lucky to have her. Have and one of her colleagues is in the back. So he'll, he'll tell her tomorrow morning how good she is. So I did, I did leave her a message. So I also asked you about the light that's out on the walk. Yeah. 
and it's still out. There's a pole missing, a light pole missing we, we on know, the road from the We know a, a Director Newman is in the room right now. She's aware of that, and uh, it's, it's on a, uh, I sad to say, a lengthy list of, of lights that have to be repaired. So it was duly noted and brought to their attention immediately. Yeah, but we don't... We, we, missing. Yes, and they're aware of it. They're aware of it, and they'll get to it, but, you know, there's, there's many like that in the community, unfortunately, and it's not, it's not fixed overnight. And those lights are on, the three lights that are left are on all day and all night, by the way. The VCOP has checked that, and they, they dispute Nobody that. Checked it. The VCOP checked it last week, even. Okay. And he said what? Take a picture with your phone for me next time and send it to me. I don't take pictures and I don't send it to anybody. Well, send it to me. You said tonight, said nice things about me tonight. You're, Keep you're, it going. You're here. You know, why do I have to take And another thing about the dogs, not that I have a dog, and not that I don't like dogs, but the walk from the parking lot to Mark Chagall, dogs are walked all the time. They, I have never seen anyone pick up. Even though there's a sign there, you know, with a dog and a picture, Nobody, and I'm on the 11th floor of La Marquise, so I can see the whole parking lot. Can you identify some of the perpetrators? Maybe no, they live in your building? No, I have no idea who they are. A lot of them are from the Rothschild. <laughs> <laughs> and some of them are from the Bellagio. All right, you're giving us some walking. leads here. Okay, the police you. are taking notes in the back. Thank you But very thank much. you. We'll, 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 we're, we're hoping that our Dog Owners Committee, uh, Anna Katz from District 2 team, is going to watch that area. Right, Anna? One more statement. Yeah. It's already June as far as the snow dump is oh, concerned. You, you said well, last year. June. We have an answer for you, and I'll have to answer her. Uh, Director Newman's in the back that it's supposed to start within the next two weeks. The, the, uh, the, uh, the pile is too, was too hard for the equipment, it would have broken. We're hoping that in the next two weeks. Um, that we're going to be able to, it to big, chop big it up. It was a big, big snow and a big pile this year. It's not to hard anymore. To Toby Shulman. And then Bernie, you're next. Bernie, you're next on my list. He didn't put your last name, but I figure it's you. We got it. Good. <laughs> Good evening. I wanted to talk to you about um, Ellie Wiesel Park, which is across from my uh, apartment on uh, Kildare. There are two rows of benches in the park. Both of them are facing outward or south. I can understand how one set should face the buses, but why can't one set face north so that people can sit in the park and enjoy the park and look at the plants and, and so on and so on. Mm -hmm. I'd have to take another look at it. I know aesthetically it was made very nicely the way the benches are. I don't know if there's a more practical way of changing it around, but I think it looks very nice. I don't, we'll have to have somebody go out there and see. But, but all the people, if you sit on the bench the way they're, they're made, you're looking at the buses or you're looking at my apartment instead of looking at the park. And aren't benches supposed to be so that you could look at the park? There's quite a few benches in there though. There's none facing into the park? No. None facing the park. Okay. Take Two rows of, facing my apartment. We'll take a note of it. We're hoping to have a monument in there one day, but we're taking okay. a note of it. And secondly, you had talked about what you had planned for Ellie Wiesel Park. I haven't seen. We're trying. It's, it's so planned on. based on hopefully some fundraising. Uh, we, I've reached out to different organizations that I thought would be supportive of it, and we will continue to try to um, have this sponsored because I think it's uh, very appropriate for sponsorship. Okay. Second thing, uh, with the second Caldwell Terrace building being built, all the benches were taken away, and I'm wondering if it's possible for the city to put some benches on the grass on Caldwell so these residents have a place to sit during the summer as they're used to sitting outside under the trees. Now they can't do it because it's a parking lot for the people who are working, and also while waiting to be picked up. Okay. Take a note of that, uh, please. That ask Public Works if there's any extra benches that could be installed somewhere on Caldwell to accommodate some of the residents. Next. I was coming here from a, uh, a shiva on, uh, on Cavendish, and as I was approaching south on uh, Mackle, I saw there was no U-turn on Cavendish. 
I followed what it said, and I made a left onto Mackle and came all around. Another person didn't bother, just turned around, didn't follow the no U-turn. I feel, and I've said it many times before, not enough police presence, not enough public security presence. People are doing things that they should not be doing, and they're not being caught, and they're not, they don't have to. It was to. his lucky day. I wouldn't suggest you do it too often, because eventually <laughs> you'll get that ticket, and it's a big one. Well, last thing. Someone suggested to me that what you're doing on Fleet East is putting a Band-Aid solution rather than doing a complete renovation. And I'm wondering what your thoughts are on that. Like we, we couldn't make a left onto Fleet yeah, okay. today yeah. because they're working, they're doing That's something. Right. Some work on Fleet. No, no, but someone suggested to me that it's just a Band-Aid no, solution. They're I think they're a Charles Senecal is behind you, but I think they're covering the, uh, the um, manhole covers. They're, they're re-asphalting the manhole covers, right? Okay. Okay. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Dr. Tonshin. I want to express thank you for the care, and I haven't been here for six months, I want you to know. But my wife is in the hospital now. I was aware a couple of months ago of things that I'm, I don't know the answer to. And I feel it's the concern of the city council rather than individual things that our people are bringing up. One is I sat in Trudeau Park. And I was very interested in noticing, and I don't know what the law is, if bicycles are allowed to drive by semi-adults, as I call them, older children, or in children, their two-wheel bike in Trudeau Park. I'd like to know the answer to that. Whether there are allowed bicycles in the park? Yeah. You better your pardon? Yes. There are allowed the bicycles in that park, yes. Okay, I don't think they should be allowed because I saw someone looking is on his way out, not paying attention. Luckily, <coughs> he didn't get hurt, but he hit the pillar on the way out and fell on the floor. So I wanted to know what the law was, and I think you should check the law because they park all over the place anyway. Uh, it's just to let you know. In addition, I noticed the sculptures in Trudeau Park. I don't know who made them. I have an idea, but there's no name on them. There but is a shallow balloon and at the entrance there's a big, big... Uh, on the entrance to the park. There's a big entrance to his area. And I noticed that they have no names by who they're made. I have an idea who, but I'm disappointed because there's street signs or whatever kind of signs you want to call them that you can be harassed, etc., fined, etc., if you damage them. So this is something else that I noticed. Thank I you. also noticed on the entrance to the park, there's pictures and slogans or writing of some sort about various people who donated time to the city. And I saw at least two of them had an X across them and so on. And there's no sign saying you be arrested like in the other part of the city. And I don't know what to do. And I felt that you should be aware. And if you can replace them, yes. And there should be signs that they cannot be damaged. Yes, that were those uh, human rights walkway signs are being replaced right now and we're getting a proper plexiglass. So to stop vandalism in the future. So that is being looked into. 
So thank you so much for coming to my regards to Dorothy. I hope she's well, I hope everything goes well, and I'm glad to see you back at council meetings. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. That's all I wanted to say. And I, I, we didn't want to know what was, what basically with the writing in the park, and I don't think it should be allowed. Rocco, one name. Okay, we got it. Welcome. Oh, Mazel Tov. Very nice. Irving. Good news. Yes, come up. Good evening. Uh, this is Rocco, and I'm Tanya Alfonsi. Hi. Uh, this is my uh, first time at a Kotemu Council meeting well, in 20 years. I apologize for not coming earlier. Come wrong. Um, if I'm here tonight, it's because I have a concern that I feel that should be looked into, um, and that's what I'm going to present to you tonight. I am a resident of Eldridge, and I live on, in a semi-detached duplex. I have uh, been an owner of uh, the semi-detached duplex for a little under 10 years. Uh, it has come to my attention um, that there, are, uh, there is a duplex on that street that is also semi-detached duplex that, is, uh, that seems to be having a use that is not strictly residential. I think this matter deserves a little bit more focus and attention. I understand this not to be an isolated situation. Um, I also understand that recently <coughs> the attached duplex um, has been sold and bought, and they may be used for a use other than strictly residential. So obviously there's something that, you know, there seems to be, um, I think something that warrants a little bit of a, a closer uh, eye and attention. I know that there may have been uh, situations that have been brought forward to the city in the past and that maybe they were looked into, and maybe at the time they were cleared. Um, however, I think this situation needs to be re-looked at, revisited, because if we're operating in a gray zone here, you need to have a certain uh, vigilance and make sure that situations don't evolve. Uh, I feel that the situation has evolved, and I am a resident and you know we have you know we we we've invested in our properties, and we you know there's a certain interest obviously that I have in maintaining, you know, my property and 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 the attractiveness um, of the property and the location. One of the consequences of when uh, residential properties are used for a purpose other than strictly residential is that you have a higher uh, level of traffic on the street. You have congestion uh, at, um, you know, at, you could have congestion at any time because of different uses that are being used for the residential will drive certain traffic to that, to that dwelling. You will have an abundance of waste. The waste is a lot larger than, than you, you anticipate from a regular uh, a home that's being used for strictly residential, you'll have loitering. Um, so and and the and it goes on. So I think that this situation should be looked into, and I'm here to put it on record today, because I do want the city of Port Saint Luke to take this matter seriously, and I don't know how many situations. There may this be a particular residence. How long have you lived on Alfred? I have lived on Eldridge for, um, so I've been an owner for at least around 10 years, but I've lived actually in the dwelling for maybe eight, seven, eight and years. And this particular residence you're talking about, how long has it been operating in this fashion? Yeah. 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 It was just, okay. you know, just, and we followed in that Right, but it, has it been transformed to this present usage, or your your? It is about. Is, is about it, to. What's the address? 6771 uh, and 73 Eldridge. Yeah. Yeah. 
So what's it? 57, 71? And 57, 73. So, yeah, just so I know, I know that Cotino Security is aware of this, and I have made my counselor aware of this, and he has been very responsive, and I appreciate that. I just thought it was time to make it a matter of record because this is a serious concern for myself, and it is a serious concern for other other residents of the street who brought it to my attention. Um, so I, I I'm here to ask Cotino Luke today to take this matter seriously and to look into it. Um, and maybe we could find solutions for the needs of, of, of the, of, you know, of, of these, um, you know, of these residences who, who have other needs, and maybe we could find a solution that we could all uh, work towards. Okay. The, the issue also that we're noticing in the area, I'm going to own the mortgage, I'm going to own the the land has been set, and the needs are really high. In front of my house last year, I think most of all, multiple times to get the land, the grass cut, and nails, uh, the security is saying it's quite easy to put, uh, put, put in the bylaws of the dogs. So, and, and, and just to reiterate, um, uh, in general about enforcement on uh, uh, cleansiness and uh, property, maintaining property, I'm not sure what the bylaws are on maintaining your, your front lawns and your back lawns, but especially, it, it, I, I don't know what the situation is in, in other council areas, but in our area on Melling and, and Eldridge, I could give you easy four to five examples where we have yards that are uh, reaching four feet, some have passed four feet. And so I'm just, maybe public security could answer the question, is there a bylaw to enforce? And why are they not being enforced? They're quite visible. So if somebody can answer that question for me today. Okay. Uh, uh, the bylaw on cutting your front lawn when it's, the weeds are too long, we have a bylaw to enforce that. Yeah. So basically we need a notification and then of, of, of the infraction, then we can send a letter. So, so now we have that address. You can take note, or at least send, take a quick look, take a <coughs> picture, and send the appropriate letter with respect to that issue. 5773 Eldridge. Yeah. 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 So um, you noted that address. I have used your Click Fix or something Click Fix app to submit some of your some some pictures <coughs> with the correct addresses of certain dwellings. It's just these are and and, and it's no surprise. Every year it's the same. Um, it's the same neighbors who have the same issues. And so it really is a question, you know, I saw a big debate on the dog bylaw. Great, healthy debate, I loved it, but it's not worth anything if you don't enforce your bylaws. And so I'm really asking for the city of Quoting Luke to enforce your bylaws. Thank you. Thank you. Terry Siegel. Um, I'm asking this question on behalf of many of my neighbors on Guelph Street. I uh, would like to know if it's possible for an engineer to test the decibel level of the church bells ringing from St. Richard's Roman Catholic Church, 7712. This is all week, um, and in particular Saturday and Sunday, Saturday, Sunday morning, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. There must be a bylaw on acceptable noise levels because we're all getting very, very annoyed. 
this is sad. It, it, it's really a nuisance at this point. And it's always too. So if you could just find out if there's uh, an acceptable level of noise, because really it's, it's tremendously loud. I mean, I'm sure it must qualify as noise pollution to that extent, with all due respect. All right? A good question. Uh, uh, Make for Schechter, in terms of the law regarding church bells, we'll have to verify that, but I believe they have the right to bring their bells. But it's just a noise and in terms of the noise. We don't have a decibel level in our bylaw. Uh, is there a, I'm not that I'm aware we, we do, but I we do. We do have a decibel level. We do have a decibel level. We do have a decibel level. We do. We do. We have a decibel level, but I don't think the church bells would be above that level. We could check, and I don't know if they could modify it. I know they're very, very proud. They spent a lot of money on that church bell. They had it renovated yes. lately, and they're very, very proud of oh. their bells and their church. And they're not the only wrong? church in this province that rings the bells. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm so I know we're very tolerant to all religious they, they institutions. They don't have to ring them as far as Egypt and they have followers. <laughs> we live across the street, okay. you know, and it's really, it's, it's annoying to us. Church of I understand, but there must be a level of moderation so that we can all be happy. Okay, so okay. I, I, uh, well, he stands corrected, yeah. I was right. There's no decibel, the problem, one of the issues is we don't have a decibel level in our bylaw. We only have it for HVAC. So, uh, the bylaw is perhaps uh, perhaps we we have to look at our bylaw to see if, what constitutes a nuisance. But it's actually the first time in the thirty close to thirty years I'm counselor that people are complaining about church bells. They so, only fixed the bell about two years ago. Well, is that is that the reason? No, they only fixed their bell a couple okay. years ago. Two three years ago. The first time I hear they fixed that too. Yeah. So, is this because you looked into or maybe a committee could just... Sometimes at noon, I hear it, but on the yeah. other side of the... No, it's only been the last few years because it was broken and they got money from downtown. Not neighbors. Okay, Matatia Loran. Matitia? Matitia, welcome. You can lift it up. No mic. So, with that matter in mind, I went to every house on Emerson, Edison, Banting, Hellert, and Porchap Avenue, and talked to anyone who was willing to answer my questions. And I asked them, firstly, if they had heard the proposal to build parking lots above all the Western Green Canary areas in Mitchell Branson Park, to which most replied that they had not. I also asked where they stood put on this issue and who and the people were bitterly divided as to it. it uh, and lastly, I found that uh, at the one time there is one widespread, that there, there is widespread support for the holding of a within that neighborhood for the holding of a referendum as to whether or not but that proposal will, will go through. And so my question is that uh, is, if the, the um, Hebrew Academy persists in the proposing it be done in this manner, will such a referendum be held? Um, first of all, like I said to the previous speakers, and thank you so much for being a, an activist and going door to door and speaking to people, that's good. We want people to know. I don't exactly know how you guys know more than we know. Was it even presented to council yet? Was it in the suburban? No. No. No, how do you know? No. Yeah, was there an article? Yeah. Online. The article was online. online. It was online. online. Yep. The article was online in Suburban Because Suburban was at the consultation, right? You were at the consultation. Because, I mean, it was all just, it was at the consultation that we were talking about different alternatives, but we never have the presentation yet of where we're at. So we're still at the preliminary stages, and I don't know if we'll need to go to a referendum, because I think we're going to have that consultation, and I think that will be our referendum, and we will listen to the people. So it's good that you went and spoke to a lot of people and they know what potentially could happen and we will have another consultation. But how do you know? 
No, it was the online? No, it's not no, in the article. It's, uh, Word of mouth. It's not in the article. It's not in the article, I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't understand how, do you know? how the public knows about something that we don't even know and we haven't even seen. Children from school come home and tell their parents. Oh, so maybe the administration's talking yeah, about it. told us that there was a plan. Okay. okay. So the Hebrew Academy. Academy. I get it. So the Hebrew Academy is telling Hebrew you? Hebrew Academy, maybe. Okay, because we haven't seen these, this, this potential proposal. We haven't seen it. PAC hasn't seen it yet. Right, thank you. Okay. If I can, uh, Mitch, oh, sure. if I can just add, because here I see it's, uh, it's a very sensitive issue, and I want to make sure that all the street like Emerson, Edison, mm -hmm. Benting. I know that uh, when we have the first public consultation, I think mostly people from Benting right. and maybe and one Keller. and Keller were uh, present. Side, but no, we uh, need everybody. Exactly, exactly, were present to this meeting, but uh, we need to make sure that right now, the Hebrew Academy is coming with a second plan mm -hmm. to present right. a second plan that all these uh, people, all the residents 100%. around Hebrew Academy will be present at this meeting. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think this is very important, and it's a very sensitive and very important issue, and we have to make sure to take the right decision mm -hmm. and to listen to our uh, constituency. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is something that I would like exactly. to see and There's to make sure they are well represented as, you know, during this, uh, uh, this period of, uh, of question and uh, decision, decision making. Right. We, we all want the same thing. I always say being mayor or a city council, you have to deal with divergent interests, and we all want the same thing. I know everybody in this room wants to support <coughs> religious institutions, schools, but at the same time, we have to be respectful of the needs of the neighborhood. So we will continue to see what we can do for the Hebrew Academy, while at the same time, speaking to the neighbors. Irene Bass and Meyer Stern, they're both Emerson. So, I mean, unless it's something new, I know I, I can guess what it's about. I've been in Los Angeles for many years. Right, I know you've lost the ball. Over 30 years in this, in this house on Emerson, and years before that, and my kids grew up and left there. Um, I feel like I'm being pushed out. Uh, talking about this uh, first consultation meeting, I think your mailing list uh, is very bad. I never got a first consultation notice, neither did any of my neighbors. So my first request is fix your consultation list, your mailing list, so that A, I get the second one, and B, somehow or other, maybe you could just send us the first one too, so we know that there was one. In fact, we don't have to just believe it. Uh, the second uh, issue I wanted to bring up was something I heard when I walked in the door. Um, dog droppings. Uh, I had this problem two years ago. Uh, my property is right in the middle between Kellert and Einstein, and I'd have nice brown and black dog droppings. And one time, I caught a young man and his, probably his mother, going by, and basically they said to me, well, it's good for the grass. It's good for the grass. So I ran inside to get my camera, and by that time, the guy had put his hood over his head and ran off. I called City Hall. Do you know what they told me? Two things. A, catch them with a camera. B, if not a camera, a video. So you tell me, you see, you're smiling and laughing because that's totally ridiculous. So catching them with a camera or with a video doesn't work. So maybe you should do something more than just tell us when we call in, prove it with a photograph. See? It's uh, when people are not respectful and they leave their dog droppings around the city, it's not an easy situation to enforce. That's definitely one of the hard ones to enforce. And if Cat you're, if you're talking about dogs, on uh, my property, I have a steady stream of uh, feral cats walking up and down along the property line with no problems at all. I don't know that this is what I'd like to have in my neighborhood. They probably have some kind of droppings also. Um, is there no way to catch them and drop them off somewhere else? You have a feeding station. We have a cats committee, that would be a big yeah. question. Well, you have a feeding the, the, you've got to see these cats. They're healthy and wealthy and maybe wise. <laughs> Let alone that two weeks ago I saw a beautiful big raccoon. The same thing. We have, so, I mean, we have, I don't we live have in the cats country. Throughout the the community. We have cats, we have cats, Anna Katz, whose name is Anna Katz, is on our committee. She's been actually one of our new trappers this year. So we have, it's a terrible thing. We have more cats than you can possibly imagine right now 
that are homeless and are being fed, and we're trying to trap them. Uh, Can I have a trap and put it outside? Speak, speak to Anna after the meeting. Okay. Speak to Anna, and she'll make a, a house right. visit. We have a cats committee, a dogs committee, and now we have a Hebrew Academy committee. Um, the uh, Hebrew Academy first proposal, though, uh, Major Schechter, or I don't know who would who would have the 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 first proposal for the Hebrew Academy. I think along with the letter and advising them of the next consultation, I'd like those people who were not informed of the first proposal to receive the initial letter and the initial proposal so they see what was the first proposal by Hebrew Academy. I don't want them just coming and seeing the second. Mm -hmm. So everything should go to the entire neighborhood. First proposal and, there's a second proposal. and a second proposal. No, we haven't Correct. seen three yet. Well, we, okay, the final one we'll get to, but at least there was one these people haven't seen. They should see the first proposal, too. There was one that went to pack? Not the first one. Not the first one. You I mean the one, one with the, uh, the parking lot underneath the gym, with the open parking. Yeah. The one that went to us that we rejected. The one that we... That, 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 the, neighbor, that the neighbors basically voted down last, and now the neighbors will vote this one down. Eventually, we'll come up with something. Maybe it's the underground parking. Good so idea. Okay, Meyer Stern. Mm-hmm. I don't want to belabor some of the other issues involving the school, but I'd like to actually a couple things. I agree, I never I live on Emerson. I never got notice of this. I got notice from these young ladies over here who circulated a note. I don't think that is appropriate. We I think there? we should know, and there must be a legal system of neighbors being consulted and, and a referendum. Is there such a bylaw? In we, we do follow all the legal requirements 100%. There are certain things that require uh, rezoning and require the neighbors voting on it. There are certain issues where you need to get, uh, according to bylaws, the consent of neighbors. Every situation is different. So with, with respect to the Hebrew Academy, what they've presented so far, we're following the rules accordingly. There's no requirement for us to be doing this public consultation that we did the first one or the second one because we are not doing the rezoning. It's already institutional. The, the first proposal that you did not get a notice on that we could have approved um, was totally, was totally, there was a sign in front of the building and it was totally within the setbacks and it was no rezoning required and we could have just gone through with it without the consultation. This one, it's questionable. You could say maybe we need to consult because of this parking lot all idea. Although it's not, if, if it was approved, the idea is not for it to be a, uh, a rezoning of the parkland. It would be a part of the park, and we would still own it. Not that it's going ahead, but we are following all the rules. Now, of course, you've heard in the past that things being voted down. That's when something's going from residential to institutional, or something's going from you know commercial to something else. This is not changing its and it's, it's maintaining its setbacks. So. Well, I really don't follow what you're saying. Are you saying that a park is zoned so that a parking lot can be put no, on a park? No. No. no, I'm just saying our, if we, we own the park. We own the, 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 the park. So what, what so is we, we could zone there? No, so it's a park. But I mean, if we wanted to build for our per personal purposes, as we've done in Trudeau Park in the past, some parking lots we have in Trudeau Park, we have some parking lots, we could decide to build a parking lot in any park. I'm not saying we're doing it, but yes, we have that legal right without going for consultation. So you have a, a legal right to put parking in a park? Yes, we do. Not that we're doing it, but we have that legal right. You're asking me the law. We have that right, yes. Okay, where would that right be? No, because we're not doing a rezoning. We're just changing the usage so of the park. Is there a bylaw about that? Of course. I, could I have access to that? <laughs> Sure. Yeah. We have all our bylaws. About, I mean, you're talking about the bylaw dealing with rezoning of land, and that's when you need to go for uh, okay. registry and a referendum. I'm going to investigate. I want to see if you. Sure. Not that it, we're doing it, but yes, we do have that right okay. if we wanted to. We wouldn't do it without the neighbor's approval. Okay. But we do have that is, right. The other thing is, during the winter, the snow clouds clear the sidewalks. And by clearing it, they ruined the grass just adjacent to the sidewalk. Right. Mm -hmm. 
We I have yet to see anybody receiving. We spent $35,000 or $45,000 on repairing people's lawns. There's, just a, there's a procedure where people have to go and make a request and we reseed and replant. And another thing we're doing this year because of the size of our sidewalks and the cleaning mechanism that we have is we're buying additional equipment now that's going to be narrower so that we'll be damaging less of the frontage of yards because it's costing it so much money to repair it. So it's not automatic that you... To call no, you need to make a call to public work. Mm -hmm. There's May, a list and then they do it. And there's a date, there's a deadline. There's a deadline and they do it. We're past well, the deadline. I did it already. Okay. But I was surprised that the city didn't do no, it. No, but we do it. We the city did it without us call. We do it. It's just a procedure to follow, but we do do it. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. I, I just want to clarify yeah, what, one, one point, uh, Mr. Stern. Before the last consultation, the Hebrew Academy came and made a proposal which, as the mayor correctly pointed out, was totally conforming. And there was no zoning change required. However, myself and council, we insisted to put up a very large sign on the front of Hebrew Academy. A large sign. I think it was like six, oh, six feet tall. And we put it up, and we even had a date on it when we, uh, residents you know, could uh, come to council and ask for information. And there was even a perspective on it. So we did this pre uh, precisely because we wanted the area residents to be aware of what was being proposed. And the night of the consultation, over, as I said before, over 30 or 40 people showed up and we listened, and Hebrew Academy listened, more importantly. I think it was just before May 9th. And they looked and, and dis, you know, reviewed all their proposals and their plans, and things came up. And I don't want to get into the details, because I'm very curious to know how, I'd like to see your note. I'd like to see what's circulating. I don't understand where it's coming from, because the PAC, I'm the chair of PAC, the PAC even hasn't seen the plan yet. So we're putting. We, it was we're, simply a note. Okay. Let's do this. Fine. I'll so we will. We will do this again. And we said we committed. And Councillor Benisri insisted. And we all agreed that once we see the new proposal based on the recommendations and the consultation and everything that came out of the last meeting, where the residents were consulted. Okay. Because the, the immediate residents were very concerned about the the covered parking for example, and other issues. So once we see the plans, and once we take a look at it, then we will go back, we will invite Emerson as well by letter, okay, with the, as the mayor said, and all of this is going to be, you know, aired out, and we're going to, to go through the process again. I just find it a little curious that you are already, you know, jumping on an issue that we, as a council, have not yet yeah, it's, dealt with. It's a very important issue for the residents. 100%. Okay. We haven't it, pronounced it. It would have the effect 100%. of the valuing our home right. on that street. Right. But now, we're not getting into that. the details now. And when we do have all the details, then we can have a full discussion. Okay. okay? I will be present. Great. Okay. But Thank I would you. like to know when it's it. We'll make sure we that everybody know. knows. We don't know yet because we have to see it. Everything's going to take the time. Going but when you do know, right. I'd like to be present. 100%. 100%. I'd like to be advised. 100%. And you'll get the first proposal and the second one, so you'll see the two. Thank you the so more much. You have, the more information, the more we'll be able to figure it out. Thank you. Thank you. So if there's no further questions, I'm going to go to the next agenda item, which is approval of the minutes. Councilor Kovacs? So moved, Mr. Mayor. Seconded no. by Councilor Cohen? Yep. All in favor? All in favor? Anyone opposed? Carry. Business arising from the minutes. Okay. The monthly department reports. Councilor Kovac. So move, Mr. Mayor, from the Eleanor London Coast and Move Library all the way down to the police department. Okay, and seconded by Councilor Torchman. Okay, any discussion? Go ahead. Just Who wants to speak? <laughs> we'll wait a minute and then we'll, 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 we will speak. So the monthly department report, reports of 
been moved and seconded, and now we will go for discussion. Who would be the first that okay. would like to speak? Uh, I'll Councilor Berger, go okay. ahead. So I, I'm, I'm ha happy to announce that um, as part of the uh, Smart City Challenge, uh, the city of Cote St. Luke was uh, selected to be in the top 10 cities across Canada uh, for this challenge. Our um, proposal, which was prepared and uh, submitted uh, on behalf of the city, um, we got a tremendous input from residents and most particularly from uh, Charles Guerin, who's sitting in the audience, and other residents who came uh, to a consultation. To a, we had a Facebook meeting, and uh, I think that the councillors who were sitting on the committee, Mitch Kajaski, David Torchman, Oren Sebag, and Stephen, uh, we, we, we worked very hard, we tried very hard to, to present a proposal that meets the needs of our residents. It addresses the issue of social isolation of seniors, and we are looking to find ways and means to deploy sensors across the city in their homes, uh, creating uh, smart homes out of, for the seniors, and also deploying sensors across the city to pick up uh, air pollution, uh, noise levels, and uh, other um, irritants that we might have in the city. And with all this information, we're going to be able to respond to the needs of our residents in a proactive and uh, very responsive way. So we're very happy that we got this. We're going to get a grant in order to do the work, and we're going to keep you posted uh, as to the progress, and eventually we hope to win the $10 million prize. Yes, sir. So thank I, you. I want to congratulate, I want to congratulate Councilor Burku, who really led this project. Um, during the election campaign, there was a lot of talk about open government. We've done a lot of things. I see Daryl Levine videotaping our meeting, and we have a website, and we have a chat site, and now we won $250,000 in the Smart City Challenge and potentially can win $10 million. There are two out of the 10 uh, cities of our size that have been, uh, that are winners of the first stage that could win, so that means we have a 20% chance, and I'm very confident based on the excellent work of council and residents and staff that we have an excellent chance at winning this. And winning it, it's just not about the $10 million. It's about what we could provide, the city of Cote St. Luke, in addition to what we already do. We have EMS, we have VCOPs, we have so many things that are are, make us unique, and if we can have sensors and know what's happening but for seniors who, let's say, don't open up their refrigerator or touch their stove for a day, and then we send a VCOP, public security, or whoever, to deal with that situation, or we know more about what's going on in the yards because of the sensors, we will be able to provide so much more for the residents of Cote St. Luke. So a big congratulations for Dita Berkeley Thank and the whole you. team. Okay, I have a second announcement. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so my second announcement is, you heard a lot, of, and Monica Celine has left the room, uh, but uh, along with Monica Celine, I think we're all very frustrated when we have to cross to carry, right? Whether we're crossing at Cote St. Luke, at Queen, at Queen Mary, at St. Catherine, at Van Horn, at Jean Talon, at De Vizina, it's, it's difficult. Sometimes it takes 35 to 40 minutes, to do a, a crossing that should normally take five to 10 minutes. So what we've decided, um, we, we're, we're launching basically a mobile, we, we're, we're creating our own challenge, how should I put it? And that's to be able to cross the carry in a more uh, efficient and in a, in, a, in a better way. And so what, uh, what we have done is we are inviting uh, our neighbors to participate with us in roundtable discussions in order to come up with creative solutions for the, sh medium, the short, medium, and long term. The summer of 2018 will mark the start of a transformative process. Cote St. Luke will host a series of roundtable discussions on crossing to carry. We will invite first the elected officials from the neighboring cities, from Saint Laurent TMR, uh, Cote d'Ange NDG, Montreal West, Hampstead, um, to um, discuss this, we will invite first the elected officials, then the professionals and staff, and finally the public to come and participate. 
The problem to be solved is simple. How are we going to improve the mobility of our residents to help them get <coughs> to where they want to go? For most of them, getting out of Cote d'Ivoire means getting past one of the most congested corridors in the country. So we are looking for smart technologies and solutions, car sharing, car, um, you know, the different kinds of apps that we can use in order to move people <coughs> through uh, car sharing and, and, and all these different uh, smart technologies. We're also looking to create, so that's going to be one working group. We're also looking to create another working group on uh, the active transit and transport solutions because, as the mayor said, <coughs> we want to have a train station, we want to have better access to the metro, we want faster access on the buses that come in and out of Cote St. Luc, and we're, we have some other creative solutions uh, with regard to the road network that we are now uh, subject to because Cavendish extension is not a magic bullet. And what we really don't want eventually is to move all the traffic from Dakari, including the truck traffic, onto Cavendish. That would not be uh, beneficial. So until such time as Cavendish is extended, we really need to look at uh, the issues of uh, mobility and transport for our residents and for the uh, Dakari corridor. So I invite you all to, to, uh, to follow this. And our meeting with the elected officials is going to be, hopefully it's going to be next week. Yeah. Um, so far we haven't had too much response, but we'll, we're looking forward to it. Maybe if you mentioned in the suburban, maybe they'll, they'll uh, feel more inclined to show up. But in any event, we're going to create our own working groups and the councillors are going to be uh, chairing these working groups and we're going to be moving this project forward. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Burkill. Uh, Councillor Torch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just wanted to I do this at every public council meeting and uh, because it's online as well. Uh, I love promoting the library. I think it's a jewel of, of Cote St. Luke. Uh, and I just want to announce that this year, this, uh, this month, uh, rather, a story time in the park is starting. So tell your kids and grandkids. Um, they're going to be touring a few of the parks. Um, so check out the, uh, the Eleanor London uh, Public Library web, web page and you'll find out which park near you We'll be having story time in the park. Um, and as well, just uh, go to our library. We have fantastic resources for youth, the elderly, um, online stuff as well. So uh, just check it out. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Italy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And first of all, I apologize for my delay today. I was caught in another meeting that went a bit long. Uh, but I want to bring up a few items. First, on the finance side, a reminder to residents that the next installment of their taxes is due on June 21st. I uh, recommend if residents are paying online to do so at least a day or two in advance, keeping in mind that sometimes it takes the banks to a day or two or so uh, to process it because we don't want residents to get late fees. Uh, the year-end audit is complete. You'll be here a bit later the mayor's report and uh, more information on that will be sent to residents. And uh, on the environment side, I wanted to, well, I want to make mention of the new inside out. I don't know if I'm stealing from Mike, uh, from Councillor Cohen to mention, but I want to mention to residents, uh, there's some very interesting information, including the page on the environment. It has some of the latest stats. It has also reminders about what goes in each of the bins, uh, the times you could put them out. I know this is something that keeps coming up often on the internet. People aren't sure. So I recommend residents to look at the inside out. It's available in English and in French. Uh, there's copies, if you didn't get one, which you should have, there's extra copies downstairs in City Hall and a lot of very useful information. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Lee. Anyone else wish to speak? Councillor Kajowski. I don't mean to sound like a broken record. It's been, this is my third public council meeting speaking of Joseph and the amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. Thank you, Elaine. Um, well, we've got something really special going on in Cote St. Luke now. First of all, I, I, I have to mention the ticket sales because it's, it's you know, a thing. We, we're officially the most sold show in the history of the Coastal New Traumatic Society. We are currently at uh, online 2,283 tickets sold, not including the gala, our first gala, which was a sold out show, not including two school performances, not including the mitzvah show we put on for 50 seniors, 50 local seniors. Uh, as of now, about 2,700, 2,800 people have seen the show. And 
I myself have seen it seven times. <laughs> uh, my kids have seen it four times. I believe most members of council have seen it. If you haven't, I suggest you get out there because we have under 200 tickets left to sell. Uh, and then for those of you who haven't seen yet, you're, it's really something special. It's, it's an amazing thing what the Coastal Dramatic Society has grown into and the talent that we attract. Uh, so I highly suggest you get out to see the show and uh, the future looks bright. Thank you. I'm going to just add to that since, uh, uh, to me, what, what's so special about this show, not that it's, I mean, it's an amazing show creatively and everybody loves the show, but on Friday, there was a show that we did that was, we were able to do because it was sponsored by the Rothenberg Group. Jack Rothenberg show, showed up at it. We had Jewish people, school kids there, and we also had special needs adults from the care center in wheelchairs. And then there was somebody else that came to uh, the, well, I can't say exactly who that person was, but I got an email from that person. They said, this is amazing. This is what, what you're, and this was a theater person, somebody who's involved in community theater. And what he wrote in his email was, you know, besides the fact that this is a, an amazing production, what true community theater is, is that you're showing it to the seniors, you're showing it to the kids, you're showing it with special needs, and your cast ranges from the age of eight till 80. So kids are in it, and seniors are in it, and the emerging artists. And that's really what we're trying to do with the Coastal Dramatic Society, is make it something that's beautiful for the community that serves everyone. So very proud of that and very proud of the additional assistance that I got from my co-producer, Mitch Kajavsky, who has helped us bring this to another level. Congratulations to you, Mitch. Uh, anybody else wish to speak? Councillor Benizri. Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just want to report uh, concerning Public Works that uh, uh, to thank them and to, to report that all the team are on the road cleaning, painting, uh, planting, uh, improving all of the parks, asphalting, etc. to make sure that uh, that we to make sure that we have a nice and a clean city. I just want to mention that May, the month of May, marks National Public Works Week, which was celebrated in the city last month, and we enjoy hosting two classes from GPPS providing those students with uh, a tour of our facility. And also it was an opportunity for, for them to have also some uh, qu uh, question and answer uh, with uh, our mayor, uh, Mayor Bronstein. I think it was a good opportunity uh, to show, you know, to our, uh, to this uh, student, how uh, a city operates. And I can tell you that all the, uh, the, the, the question, and the suggestion of the city, it's exactly what we are what we are having here during our uh, our council meeting. So it was very it was very very interesting to see that. So I kids think it was a good it was they a had, good meeting. They had very good questions. Yeah. Kids have the best ideas. They had Absolutely. great ideas and good questions. It's great. Yeah. So I want to thank uh, our uh, public work uh, department. Thank you, Council Benizri. Anybody else wish to speak? Councilor Cohen. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, proud to announce that, uh, of course, last year, Harold Cammy and I uh, started with the support of Council, the Pierre Brunet Fund for uh, Parks and uh, Bursary Fund for Parks and Recreation. It was Pierre who uh, owns, well, the, the one McDonald's now remaining in Cote St. Luke. Um, and he came to us and said, uh, what can we do for McHappy Day that's Cote St. Luke? And we brainstormed and came up with this fund that we could provide for people in Cote St. Luke who may not have the financial means to register for certain programs, individuals who may have special needs, and we started fundraising. We've done extremely well in terms of donations that have come through McHappy Day and through our Golf Classic, and we're pleased to announce that the first uh, amount of money, uh, $2,000, is going to be earmarked for uh, the Singerman uh, Park Day Camp. Uh, that's going to have a breakfast program. Um, and uh, breakfast is going to be provided by McDonald's. It's going to include juice, oatmeal, yogurt, and fruit. And we're very excited for this initiative. So already, uh, the, the fund is, is, is uh, having an impact in our community. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cohen. Any further discussion? And we'll move on. Movement seconded. All in favor of the monthly departmental reports? Carried unanimously. And we move to item 5A, Councillor Torchman. 5A, Library. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, this is a notice of motion, bylaw 2513, to be entitled bylaw amending the fees and fines schedule for the Eleanor London Coat St. Luke Public Library. Uh, this notice of motion to waive the reading of the bylaw. 
I'm also tabling of the, the draft bylaw 2513 entitled Bylaw Amending the Fees and Fines Scheduled for the Eleanor London Coat St. Luke Public Library. Thank you, Councillor Torchman. So, no need of, for a vote on that. So, just a friendly amendment, um, we no longer have to be able to do the bylaw. So, no longer need to wait. Yeah, we don't have to. Okay. Okay. Okay, so 5B, Councillor Torchman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. That the Cote St. Luke City Council hereby authorizes the city to permit the sale and services of alcohol subject to the approval by the Régie des Alcools, des Courses et des Jeux of the requisite permit to be issued to the Club Sportif et Culturel West Can for the event, for an event, said event, to be held on Saturday, July 14th, 2018, between 5 p.m. and 1 a.m. at the Harold Greenspawn Auditorium, that the Director of Library Services or any of other employee under her care and control shall be authorized to sign any document giving effect to the foregoing. Thank you, Councillor Torchman. Seconded by Councillor Benizri. Any discussion? This is just to give a, uh, an alcohol permit to an outside uh, group that is having an event in uh, the auditorium. Moved and seconded, all in favor? Carried unanimously, and we move to item 6A, Councillor Erdl. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Be it resolved that bylaw 2511, entitled bylaw 2511, decreeing various facility upgrades for Kerwin and Trudeau Parks, and the application of the sum of $142,945 taken from the available balances on bylaws 2289, 2305, 2306, 2325, 35, 59, 60, 61, 24, 28, 29, 30, 31, 49, 60, and 61 in view of financing and expense of $142,945B and is hereby adopted. Moved by Councillor Erdely, seconded by Councillor Benizri, any discussion? Councillor Erdl. So just to explain briefly, first, this is a common practice, what we do. Uh, what happens sometimes, the city will borrow money on old projects, and at the end, uh, there's some leftover money, uh, so money that was already borrowed, uh, but those projects are done. So what we do, instead of borrowing new money, we take that money and reallocate it for new projects. Uh, the two projects being the Trudeau Park upgrades, which will be done this summer, and the Kerwin Park uh, consultation or consultant who will work on renovations to Kerwin Park, which will take, take place next year. And just to mention some of the renovations taking place in Trudeau Park, uh, that includes the replacement of the electrical control panels for the lighting of the baseball fields and outdoor rink. It includes the installation of shade structures for the playground, uh, replacement of the baseball field scoreboard, installation of additional fencing around the playground areas, and installation of entrance gates and various signage throughout the park. Uh, and just to mention, the tender was already sent out, and we should be receiving the results of the tender by June 15th. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Anyone opposed? Carried unanimously, and we move to item just six. Just a, a little clarification, uh, Mr. Mayor, that there was a change, and so the assistant chief was trying to notice the services the minute between draft bylaw and the final version of the bylaw. It was a truly capital change. The amount stays identical. However, um, there was an amount treasure cost that had been uh, transferred, I, I guess now temporarily, to the unrestricted surplus. And so certain money, um, actually the trajectory was went from the unused loan to the unrestricted surplus. And now, after consultation with the Quebec industry, we're indicating in the loan by law exactly the nature of that transfer. So there was a change between the draft by law and the final version, but it was purely for accounting. Thank you, Councillor. Sure. Thank you, Mayor Schechter. Now the city clerk will note that in a minute and send that to the map. Thank you. 6B. Councillor Erdley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Be it resolved that bylaw 2512, entitled bylaw 2512, decreeing road resurfacing at various locations within the territory of Cote St. Luke and the application of the sum of $840,000 taken from avail balances of bylaws 2290. 2307, 2317, 2333, 2428, uh, sorry, and 2428 in view of financing and expense of 840,000 B and is hereby adopted. Thank you, Councillor Erdley. Seconded by Councillor Benizri. Any discussion, Councillor Erdley? So, just to mention, this is a similar 
concept. We're taking money from, again, old bylaws that where we had borrowed the money previously and uh, not used the full amount, and this money is going to be used for road and sidewalk work uh, to be done this year or next year. Okay, moved and seconded. All in favor? Okay, no one opposed. Carried unanimously, and we move to 6C. Councillor Erdl. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so be it resolved. Let me see here. Be it resolved that Coates Inlet City Council modifies the bylaws identified in the annex, uh, subsection one, by replacing the expense or loan <coughs> amounts with the amounts indicated under the heading new expense amount and new loan amount in the annex. Uh, number two, by adding a provision to that effect to discharge a portion of the expense, the municipality will allocate from its general fund the amount shown under the heading general fund in the annex. Three, by modifying the provision concerning the allocation of a grant to indicate the amount shown under the heading grant. Am I reading the wrong one? Yeah, C. You're doing the resolution to confirm total fulfillment of final objections. Yeah, it's, it's good. C. Yeah. Okay. Am I reading the right one? No, no, no. Okay. Sorry, I wasn't sure. I, I thought I was on the wrong one no, by mistake. No, no, you're uh, right. Where was I? Uh, under the heading grants in the annex, the attached memorandums of understanding are deemed to be part uh, of the corresponding bylaws indicated in the annex. That Côte saint City Council informs the Ministère des Affaires Municipales et de l'Occupation du Territoire that the borrowing <laughs> authority for the bylaws identified in the annex will not be used entirely because of the changes made to the bylaws by this resolution and, where applicable, the quotas paid by the opponents or the amounts received from the taxpayers in a single installment from their capital payment. The amounts of these allocations are shown under the headings proponents and cash payments in the annex. Uh, be it further resolved, the Côte saint City Council asked the Ministry to cancel in its registers the residual balances mentioned in the annex, that a certified copy of the resolution be sent to the Ministre des Affaires Municipales et de l'Occupation du Territoire, and that Côte saint City Council hereby confirm the total fulfillment of bylaw objectives and the cancellation of several residual balances. Okay, so moved by Councillor Erdely, seconded by Councillor Benizri. Any discussion? So maybe I'll, this one is a little bit more complicated, so I'll explain. So these are a little bit different. These are cases of projects that have been done where we didn't borrow the full amount. There was no extra money, but uh, we had originally estimated a larger cost. Uh, so what we've tried to do uh, is, let's say, a bit, bit more careful when borrowing. So in these cases, we didn't, uh, there was no extra money because we had borrowed either the perfect amount or we had actually not borrowed and done the projects on our own. Uh, however, what we're doing is informing the Ministry of Municipal Affairs that the projects are done, that we don't need to borrow the money, because if the ministry thinks that we are still going to borrow or could borrow money, uh, the extra money at some point in the future, it could potentially hurt our credit. Uh, and if I can give an example, uh, if, if an individual has too many credit cards in their name and then applies for an additional credit card when, they are, when the credit card company or the bank checks with the credit bureau, it looks bad if they have too much potential credit. So what we're doing in effect is informing the ministry these projects are done. We don't need to borrow any more money. We are officially closing the project. So again, these are old projects, some in the last year or two, some going back to 2008, uh, where the projects are done and we don't have to borrow. So it'll help the city in the future if we need to borrow money. Okay, move and second it all in favor. Anyone opposed? Carried unanimously. We move to item D, Councilor Erdley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. First. Be it resolved that Coates Inlet City Council approves the attached list of disbursements for the period of May 1st, 2018 to May 31st, 2018 for a total amount of $4,523,056.29 in Canadian funds and that Treasurer Certificate number 18-0114 dated June 4th, 2018 has been issued by the City Treasurer attesting to the availability of funds to cover the described expenses. Moved by Councillor Erdely, seconded by Councillor Benizri. Any discussion? So just to mention some of the larger items, uh, we had some, uh, some payments for the parking lot work uh, done behind City Hall. We had some payments for some of the water works that are going on throughout the city, uh, both on sewer pipes and freshwater pipes. And we had one or two final balances for snow removal from the winter. And those are the major items to report. <coughs> Thank you. So moved and seconded, all in favor? Now in favor of the disbursements, no one opposed, carried unanimously. And now, Councillor Lee, item E, the mayor's so, report. Counts, uh, item E, I believe the mayor will read. So I'll read it, and then you'll do the And, uh, and then we'll do the resolution to... Uh, okay. Uh, well, we decided we're going to do 
website first, and then either, oh, you were there? You were there? Mm -hmm. I and was either there. Whatever, either the uh, Suburban? Do we have to decide now? Oh, do we have to decide? Was the Suburban? Yes, we have to adopt a resolution. Um, it used to be that the old law, if we distribute it door to door, we have to adopt a resolution. Now we still want to do it. We need to adopt a resolution elect the venue of how we want to Okay, so we don't know the, the cost. Could you ask Daryl? Well, with, oh, with Darryl, Darryl. oh, so we can't do the resolution, leave it No, open. we have to adopt now. So we can't adopt to do either that yeah. or that. Yeah. Yeah. I so thought there was no more obligation to, to do it, that it's... Correct, you are 100% correct. We only have to put it on the website, but in addition, we can put it in a newspaper or mail it. Correct, um, but uh, Councillor Kovac's question is also relevant. There is no longer a legal obligation to have a mayor's report. This is the new variation. Right. And there's no obligation to do more than put it on your website, but we will. So right. the question is to put it in the suburban or to mail it. Correct. Council has uh, Right. What's that? You're saying the it's the same you don't have to do it right now. Well, I need to know from Daryl. That's why is I asked. Is Daryl here? What's, can Daryl do it? Let me ask you. While I read it, you find out. Give me, a, give me an economic decision. I'm good with anything. As long as people know. So I will read it now for everybody to hear. The mayor's report on the financial statements for the year ended December 31st, 2017. In conformity with section 105.2.2 .2 of the City and Towns Act, I am pleased to present a report of the highlights of the financial statements for the year ended December 31st, 2017. The financial results in this report are a summary of the official financial statements of the City of Cote St. Luke, audited by Raymond Shabbat Grant Thornton. Although this report has important information, I invite you to view the complete Ministry of Municipal Affairs financial statements that are available on the City's website. Highlights. Revenues increased by 1.2 million or 1.7% compared to 2016. Expenses decreased by 148,000 or 0.002%. And financing costs, interest, and capital repayments decreased by 569,000 or 0.8% compared to 2016. The city posted an operating surplus of 2.3 million for the fiscal year ended December 31st, 2017, compared with 1.3 million forecasted surplus published on October 2nd, 2017. The major variances that contributed to the $2.3 million surplus are the following. First, increase in transfer duties, 944,000. Second, increase in government grants, 640,000. Third, agglomeration apportionment reimbursement, 800,000. Four, decrease in pension plan contributions, 447,000. And fifth, increase in snow removal costs, 360,000. The city spent 7.4 million in capital investment projects. 3.1 million was financed by government grants and 631,000 was transferred from the operating budget and reserves to offset the capital expenses. The city's long-term debt remained stable at 52 million, even though 4.8 million of new debt was issued in 2017 to pay for various capital projects. The city received an unqualified audit opinion from RCGT regarding the official Mammoth financial statements that were deposited by the city treasurer to the council on May 14th, 2018. The auditor's report indicates that in all material respects, the financial results present, present an accurate portrait of the city's financial position as of December 31st, 2017, including the results of its activities, the change in its net financial assets and of its net debt and the cash flows for the fiscal year ended on that date in conformity with Canadian public sector accounting standards. Now, uh, on an annual basis, the City Council and City Administration focus on creating a fair, efficient and responsible budget and in monitoring revenues and expenses throughout the year. I'm very happy with the financial position of the City and assure you that we will continue to do everything possible to maintain the excellent level of services and high quality standards that residents have come to expect and that have made our City an incredible place to call home. And all the details in terms of the revenues, expenditures, net revenues, etc., comparing 2016 and the actual and budgeted amounts for 2017 are listed on our city website and will be published or mailed. Okay, so 
we have a, we have a proposal here. Yes, Councillor Berkman. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, I'll let Stephen talk first. Right. I second his motion. Okay, Councillor so The so sorry, I did. I really I thought we could leave it open <coughs> no. in the resolution, okay. no. but basically to clarify the. The uh, cost to mail it is slightly more expensive. It's about seven hundred dollars more. It's Twenty-two hundred versus fifteen hundred. My feeling is, irrelevant. although many, I know most people, most residents do you read. Get a better this, deal from the suburban. Most, re put most it residents there. do read the suburban. Uh, not all the residents, and I think seven hundred dollars. I think it's we'll nice for every resident to receive. Until next year, when the suburban gives us a better deal, and then we'll publish it. So. <laughs> well, so, not everybody receives the suburban, which is a shame. Right. But I think so we have I to would, reach out to everybody. I would move to uh, okay. to publish uh, it, to, to print it, it, and, and mail it. So mail. Okay, on the website and mail once again. Right. So everybody gets mail to read. And the mail and, and put on the city course. website. Okay. So, okay. So, so I will ahead. read the agenda, yeah. uh, the uh, the action item. Be it resolved that in accordance with the law, Cote St. Luke City Council hereby authorizes and orders the publication of the text of the Mayor's Report on the financial statements for the year ended December 31st, 2017 of the City of Cote St. Luke uh, to be distributed to each civic address in the municipality and to be posted on the City's website. Okay, moved by Councillor Erdely, seconded by Councillor Berku. Any further discussion? All in favor? Anyone opposed? Carried, and we'll move on to item Seven Human Resources, Human Resources, 7A, Councilor Kovac. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Be it resolved that the Cote St. Luke City Council appro approves the hiring of the Blue Collar Auxiliary Employee, whose names are listed on the document entitled Auxiliary Employees Blue Collar Hiring, dated May the 28th, 2018, and that said employee's term of employment will be as per the conditions of the collective agreement. The Treasurer's Certificate Number 18-0112, dated June the 4th, has been issued by the City Treasurer, attesting the availability of funds to cover the above described expenses. And this is for um, uh, someone's transferring Blue Collar Park and Recreation for the pool. Okay, moved by Councillor Kovac, seconded by Councillor Benizri. Any other discussion? All in favor? Anyone opposed? Carry, move to B, uh, Councillor Benizri, 7B. Oh, sorry. Public words, auxiliary employee. Sorry. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Be resolved that the the Cat Saint Luc City Council approve the hiring of the of the blue collar auxiliary employee whose name are listed on the document entitled auxiliary employee. Blue Collars hiring date, dated May 24, 2018, and that say employees term of employment will be as per the conditions of the collective agreement. That tre treasurer's certificate number 18-0111 dated June 4, 2018 has been issued by the city treasurer attesting to the availability of the funds to cover the above described expenses. Moved by Councillor Benizri, seconded by sure. Councillor Kovac. Any discussion? These are for auxiliaries, auxiliaries, workers to make sure that our city remains beautiful. So moved and seconded. All in favor? All in favor? Okay. Auxiliary employees of Public Works. No one opposed? Carried unanimously. We move to item 7C, which is Councillor Kovac. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Be it resolved that the Cote St. Luke City Council approves the hiring of the white collar. Auxiliary employees whose names are listed on the document entitled Part-Time Employees White Collar Hiring dated May the 28th, 2018 at said, and said employees terms of employment will be asked for the conditions of the collective agreement. That treasure certificate number 18-0113 dated June the 4th, 2018 has been <coughs> issued by the city treasurer attesting to the availability of funds to cover the described expenses and these are for day camp counselors. Okay. Moved by Councillor Kovac, seconded by Councillor Benizri. Any other discussion? All in favor? No one opposed? Carried unanimously. We go to 7D, which is Councillor Berku. Oh, okay. Yes, hiring of mm -hmm. students for human resources. Okay. <coughs> uh, be it resolved that Cote Luke Council approves the hiring of the student employees whose names are listed in the document entitled 2018 Students, dated May 28, 2018, and that said employee's term of employment will be as per the respective dates indicated on the aforementioned list. 
that the Treasurer's Certificate Number 18-0109, dated June 4, 2018, has been issued by the City Treasurer attesting to the availability of funds to cover the above-described expenses. Thank you, Council. The first committees are for three employees, two in legal, the City Clerk Department, and one in urban development. So that is moved, seconded by yeah, Councillor Kovac. Any further discussion? All in favor? Anyone opposed? Carried. And then we move to item E, Councillor Burku. Yes. Which is auxiliary you. employees for urban development. Be resolved that Cotillo Council approves the hiring of Yvon Morin as a temporary building inspector, auxiliary white collar position in the urban development department effective May 8, 2018 to August 30th, 2018 and that the Treasurer's Certificate has been issued attesting the availability of funds to cover the described expenses. Moved by Councillor Burku, seconded by Councillor Benizri. Any discussion? No. No, Yvonne Moret. Welcome back temporarily. All in favor? Anyone opposed? Carry. And now we move on to... 7 uh, F. 7 F. 7 F. Councillor Burku. Thank you, Mr. Mayor that the Council of Cote St. Luke hereby approves the termination of employment of white collar permanent employee number 3088, effective May 15, 2018. Moved by Councillor Berkeley, seconded by Councillor Benizri. Any discussion? All in favor? No one opposed? Carried. We move to item 7A, Councillor Kovac. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Be it resolved that Councillor Stephen Erdely is and shall be named mm -hmm. the Acting Mayor of the City of Cote St. Luke, effective July the 1st, 2018, up to and end of September 30th, 2018, inclusively, and further, that the aforementioned Councillor Erdely shall have and may exercise the powers of the Mayor when the said Mayor is absent or unable to perform the duties of his office. Moved by Councillor Kovac, seconded by Councillor Torgman. Any discussion? All in favor? Anyone opposed? Carried unanimous. Congratulations, Councillor Early. Thank you. Yeah. And now we go to item 8B, Councillor Kovac. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, be it resolved that Council. Oh, uh, which one is it? Hold on a second. Let's make sure I have the right one. This one. Page, page 225 of the digital. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm just that there is a few of them. Hold on. Be it resolved that Council hereby authorizes the amendment to the insurance contract for insurance for the whole as more amply delineated by Annex A, forming part of the resolution as cited here and after at great length, at length, that all terms and conditions of the resolution shall remain in full force and effect. Uh, basically, what this is is uh, housekeeping and changing some of the. Um, Clarification of what the demerged cities do versus what the UMQ's obligations are. Move by Jack. We already adopted the existing contract for cosmetic amendments of the requested. The UMQ should now include them and now they will be done. Thank you. Moved by Councillor Kovac, seconded by Councillor Burku. Burku. And any further discussion? All in favor? No one opposed. Carried unanimously, and now we move to. Item C, Councillor Kovac. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm going to read all the whereases because I do feel that it's important. This was initiated by the Mayor of Hampstead, and I think that many uh, municipalities will, have adopted, will adopt this, and I think we should go forward. Whereas cochlear implant surgery in Quebec is only done in Quebec City, whereas approximately 70% of the people needing this surgery live closer to Montreal than to Quebec City, Whereas it is a policy of the Quebec government to have medical services provided close to where people needing the services live. Where it is a hardship, both financially and emotionally, for deaf and profoundly deaf people to have to travel to Quebec City for the assessment, surgery, and programming of the speech processor, all of which require three or four separate trips and a total of 15 days away from home. Whereas some of these people are unable to travel to Quebec City due to financial reasons, family obligations, and or job requirements. Whereas the surgeons, audiologists, and other professionals to establish a cochlear implant program in Montreal are already in Montreal and fully trained. Whereas virtually all medical schools in North America and Europe offer training in cochlear implant surgery, and in fact medical schools are supposed to offer the training to be accredited. Whereas transferring 70% of the budget from the Quebec City program to a new Montreal program will actually save the government money since there is a presently a duplication of assessment and counseling services. 
whereas the Montreal program can be set up and running within a few months of the budgetary allotment being transferred, whereas wait lists will be shorter if surgeons in both Montreal and Quebec City do the surgery, whereas people who are deaf or profoundly deaf are usually unemployed or, un or underemployed and after the surgery can be expected to earn more and pay more taxes whereas a group of top surgeons and others have been asking for the surgery to be done in Montreal for over 14 years, where the Quebec minister, health minister has been fully aware of this file for at least eight months, whereas the city of Côte Saint-Luc has residents who need or may need this surgery, be it resolved that the city of Côte Saint-Luc requests that the government of, Co of Quebec transfer 70% of the total budget for a cochlear implant program to Montreal immediately with the remaining 30% being left for the, for the Quebec City program, and that a copy of this resolution be sent to the Premier of Quebec, the Quebec Health Minister, the MA for Darcy McGee, the leaders of all the parties represented in the National Assembly, and all mayors on the island of Montreal. Thank you, Councillor Kovac. Seconded by Councillor Erdely. Any discussion? I think it speaks well for itself. Mm -hmm. This is a very good resolution. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Anyone opposed? Carried unanimously, and we move on to 9A, Councillor Kovac. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Be it resolved that the Cote St. Luke City Council hereby approves the replacement of the Parks and Recreation General Refund Policy with a new Parks and Recreation Program procedures and policies, and that said resolution shall be accepted for immediate action. Moved by Councillor Kovac, seconded by Councillor Portman. Any discussion? Well, just to highlight that the drop-in fee policy, a general refund policy, uh, credit <coughs> policy, uh, for whether it's for medical reasons, refunds for memberships, aquatic team refunds, the Cote St. Luke Day Camp, what the director has actually done is harmonize across the board all the policies and updated what actually is in practice and to make it fairer for all people. Right. Thank you, Councillor Kovac. Moved and seconded. All in favor? No one opposed. Carried. The new policy is in. And now we move on to 9B, Councillor Kovac. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Be it resolved that the Cote St. Luke City Council hereby approves the replacement of the Parks and Recreation Anti Harassment Policy with a new Parks and Recreation Code of Conduct, and that the said resolution shall be accepted for immediate action. Moved by Councillor Kovac, seconded by Councillor Kajaski. Any discussion? Well, I think the last one that we did was in 2007, so it's rather been updated, reflecting the reality of today. Right. It deals with all types of issues such as respect, safety and security and, um, you know, all proper ways of speaking and behaving uh, when dealing with programs or individuals in our city. And our staff. And our staff. Exactly. So it's, uh, yeah, it's very well done. Very well done. Uh, moved by Councillor Kovacs, seconded by Councillor Kajaski. All in favor? No one's opposed. So th that new code of conduct is approved. A 9C, Councillor Kovac. Be it resolved that bylaw 2510, entitled bylaw 2510, creating the fee schedule for culture, sports, and leisure activities for the fall 2018 and winter of 2019, being is hereby adopted. Moved by Councillor Kovac, seconded by Councillor Gajaski. Any discussion? It's, a, it's an update of the costs for the fall and winter season. Perfect. So now we have moved and seconded. All in favor? No one opposed. So we have procedures, policies, we have a code of conduct, and we have fees to charge. Parks and Recreation, well done. Now we move to item number 10, the one we've all been waiting for, public safety. Councillor Cohen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I so move that bylaw entitled bylaw to regulate dog fee and it's hereby adopted in number 2508. Moved by Councillor Cohen, seconded by Councillor Kajaski. Any discussion? Councillor Cohen. Uh, we've, I think we've said everything we had to say uh, at, the, uh, at the public consultation meeting at 7.30. Uh, some people have still hung on, so I appreciate that. Um, I think we've come a long way in six months. I think the public consultation was fruitful. I think discussions we've had in camera uh, among council have been helpful. And I'm hoping that the message I'm giving to our public is for people who own dogs, please be responsible. Don't make us sorry that we passed certain parts of this bylaw. And I know that our committee is going to meet more regularly and we are going to look for ways to ensure that we have responsible dog ownership. 
and uh, I know that's the reason why a lot of people joined the committee, including our two VCOPs in the back of the room. That was their motivation for joining the committee, and uh, I hope they'll wear their uniforms when they do their walks. So thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Cohn. Councillor Kobach. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. First of all, I want to say thank you to Mike Cohn for putting such a, and to Jordy Reichsman for putting together such a comprehensive bylaw as well as the work with your committee because I know that I don't own a dog but I do have a grand dog that I adore but there are still a few things in here that I'm not comfortable with I'm not sure about the the nine meters I'm not convinced that all dog owners whether most are responsible or not will actually do the cleaning up I'm a often a victim of people that just don't care and leave everything lying around or throw it into my recycling bin and not even the composting bin I'm concerned that in some places, uh, dogs that if they have loose, and even if you do clean it up, there's residue and you want children to play or go barefoot in those green areas, so I'm still uncomfortable with that. I'm also not comfortable with allowing dogs to be carried into municipal buildings, be it the ACC or the library. I just don't think that's appropriate and I'm not sure about how other people would feel if they have allergies. Um, again, Somebody raised the issue about enforcing bylaws. We have tons of bylaws that don't get enforced well. This is going to be one of the tougher ones when somebody does complain and say, you have to witness it, you are not fast enough with your camera. Um, it's, it's just one of those things that I'm, I don't think it's, <coughs> it's kind of ready yet. Um, the other thing that's remaining in the bylaw is the number of dogs that you're allowing in a home. I think four is too many, but that's just my opinion. Um, I know that across the street from myself, when I went door to door, there were some homes where there were four, five, maybe more dogs. The noise was intolerable for some of the residents, and they have no recourse because you're going to allow, if, if everybody in that place has four dogs, um, what does the poor person do who doesn't? So as much as I appreciate all the work and all the hard work that's gone into this and the efforts, and I, I see the progress, and I see that pets are really a part of your family, because I see it with my grandchildren, how integral that, that, that dog is to their life. I'm still not um, entirely comfortable with what we've done here. So for that reason, I can't, I can't yet say yes to it. Thank you, Councillor Kovac. Councillor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this is a bylaw that I've reflected on quite a bit. I had the opportunity, I have to admit, only to attend one of uh, Councillor Cohn's meetings with the residents. Uh, but I got some very interesting feedback from residents on that day. And I have to admit, I've spoken to many of my neighbours, I've spoken to friends and, and asked their advice, uh, both residents who are dog owners and those that are not. Uh, I've had mixed, uh, mixed opinions, but I guess where I'm at right now, my, my big concern is similar to one of the ones that Councillor Kovac mentioned, is with regard to the nine meter proximity to playgrounds. Um, I'm concerned for a few reasons. One, the reality when children are at a playground is they're in the playground, but they're often in the vicinity of the playground. They're running around the playground. Uh, many of them are running around barefoot. Uh, many of them are not necessarily comfortable with dogs. We hope they will be. We hope they, sh they are, they should be, but they're not necessarily. Uh, and my other concern is that when we say nine meters, uh, no disrespect to dog owners, but nine meters, no one knows exactly what do nine meters is, uh, and some might uh, encroach on that area or in that distance. Uh, that being said, uh, after much reflection, I will be voting in favor of this by law. Uh, however, uh, I will vote in favor of it, but I will reserve my judgment. I would, my hope is that dog owners will comply. My hope is that they will keep that distance so that they're not in the playground area or too close infringing on children who are playing, we're not necessarily comfortable. Uh, and given if they do, then that's great. If not, then I will be pushing to revisit this bylaw within six months to a year if we see that residents are not following. Uh, again, my hope is that they do. And for that reason, I will in the end be voting in favor of this bylaw. Thank you, Councillor Early. Any other discussion? Councillor Kajaski and then Councillor Burke. Well, I'll make this very brief. Uh, I, I'd like to personally thank the dog committee, in particular Jonathan Goldman, who I haven't heard name, I don't think, in this discussion in particular for all their work on this file. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks a lot. Uh, Councillor Yeah, um, I too am going to vote in favor of the bylaw and I want to uh, commend Councillor Cohn for uh, organizing uh, the docs committee. Uh, I think it's uh, really commendable that uh, all this uh, work went into it and 
I think that we're going to get a lot of good feedback and we'll see. We'll see how it goes. So far, so good because I can tell you that we allow dogs in uh, certain green spaces in my district and District 3 along Bailey and uh, in different areas and I haven't heard any issues whatsoever. So those were not listed as parks, but they are green spaces along Bailey uh, where dog owners could not go before and now they're allowed to go with the uh, dogs on leash and there have been absolutely no issues over the past year. And there's plenty of people, you know, who are walking around. So thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? So I would just like to say that I'm on, on board in on McDowell Street. I grew up and there were bunnies there and there's still bunnies there. <laughs> I that's, just saw that's, bun that's the next committee, the bunny. I just saw a bunny <laughs> hopping in front of my mother's house a couple of days ago. She's very, very cute. It was, I think, Saturday night. So, uh, yeah, we have a lot of nice wildlife in this city. Let's, let's keep all the bunnies. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Anyone opposed? <coughs> Carried with uh, one opposing. Councillor Kovac. Uh, and now we move on to item 11A, Councillor Ben Isri. 11A. Merci, Monsieur le maire. Et résolu que le conseil municipal de la ville de Côte-Saint-Luc conseille, par la présente, octroie un contrat pour l'achat d'une voiturette aspirateur de marque MADVAC LR-50 ou équivalent, année 2018, à ExproLink, à la suite de l'appel d'offres C-14-18, pour le montant de 72 912 dollars plus les taxes applicables. Que les dépenses décrites seront financées par le règlement d'emprunt numéro 2502, déjà approuvé par le ministère des Affaires municipales et Occupations du territoire. Que le certificat du trésorier numéro TC 18-0116, daté du 6 juin 2018, a été émis par le trésorier de la ville de Côte-Saint-Luc, attestant la disponibilité des fonds pour couvrir les dépenses décrites. Merci. Proposé par le conseiller Benesri, appuyé par le conseiller Kovac. Est-ce qu'il y a des discussions no, uh, this is just the, pur uh, the purchase of one made vac LR. It's a, it's an outdoor litter vacuum. So this is a, we are buying that for to add to our uh, fleet uh, in uh, public works. Move and second it. All in favor? No one opposed. Carried unanimously. We move to item 12A, Councillor Kovac. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Be it resolved that the preamble is an integral part here of this recited throughout that the city hereby confirms its membership to the CH 12019-2020 purchasing group put in place by the Union of Municipalities of Quebec covering the period from January the 1st, 2019 to December 31st, 2020 for the purchase of 12% sodium hypochlorite in bulk required for the city operations and that the city entrusts the UMQ with the mandate to prepare on its behalf and that of other municipal organizations concerned to call for tenders, document, to award one or more group purchase contracts covering the period of January the 1st, 2019, <coughs> as, as of December 1st, 2020, I don't think until. that's correct, or until, yeah. um, that in order to enable the UMQ to prepare its tender document, the city undertakes to provide the UMQ with the names and quantities of the chemical products it will need annually by filling in the technical registration forms sent by the UMQ and to return this document before the required date that the city entrust the UMQ with, with the mandate to analyze the bids submitted and to award contracts for a period of two years in accordance with the terms set out in the call for tenders and the applicable law, that the UMQ shall award a contract, the city undertakes to respect the terms of the contract as if it had directly contracted with the supplier to whom the contract was awarded, that the city acknowledges that the UMQ will receive directly from the winning bidder as a management fee a percentage of the amount before tax is billed to each participant. This rate is set at 1.6% for UMQ members and 3.5% for non-UMQ members. A copy of the present resolution shall be transmitted to the UMQ. Moved by Councillor Kovac, seconded by Councillor Kajavski. Any discussion? Yeah. Councillor Erdley? Yeah, just want to mention, uh, first, so yeah, it's for sodium hypochlorite, NaOCl, but the interesting thing to note as well, this is for the, the pool, uh, we paid last year 26 cents per liter. If we look back as part of the UMQ, uh, if we look back a few years, the city was purchasing this on its own, obviously in much smaller quantities. And if we look in the past, the city was paying about 75 to 80 cents a liter when purchasing obviously smaller quantities for our own pool, for our own swimming pool. Now that we are part of a collective tender, 
along with the UMQ, of course, they're purchasing in much larger quantities, so we're paying about a third of the price. So I'm very happy to report the significant savings for the city because mm -hmm. of this. Great. Moving seconded. All in favor? No one opposed. Carried unanimously. And we move to 12B. Councillor Berku. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Lire en français. Par le présent, je donne avis de motion que le règlement 2506 est intitulé Règlement sur la délégation de pouvoir aux fonctionnaires et aux employés de la ville sera présenté à une réunion subséquente pour adoption. Et euh, le maire Brownstein a mentionné l'objet et la portée du règlement 2506 à être intitulé Règlement sur le, la délégation de pouvoir aux fonctionnaires et aux employés de la ville. Et en plus, je dépose le projet de règlement 2506 à être intitulé « Le règlement sur la délégation de pouvoir aux fonctionnaires et aux employés de la ville ». So basically, that's our delegation authority bylaw, by and we just give a notice of motion and table. Right. <coughs> Councilor Burku. And I want to just mention further that what we're doing with this bylaw is we're uh, basically improving administrative efficiency and streamlining the operations, which will consequently improve quality of service to residents. So we have, number one, increased the amount of spending authority for city employees. Uh, the city manager can spend up to $25,000. Uh, and uh, various directors and managers below the city manager have uh, their, the, uh, their cap on um, uh, spending has been slightly increased. And also we've outlined non-expenditure related powers that should be attributed to certain city employees, like hiring uh, uh, blue collar or temporary workers, things like that. So we're just trying to make the administration more efficient and we will adopt the bylaw at a subsequent meeting. Thank you, Councillor Berkey. 13A, Councillor Berkey. We didn't vote on it yet. It's <laughs> notice of motion and tabling. I don't think, oh, we, I don't don't think we need vote. to vote on it. Oh, sorry. Mm. Notice sorry. of motion and tabling. My bad. So now we move on sorry. to 13A. Sorry, sorry. We're not voting on it yet. Sorry. Now to 13A, we're going to vote on 13A. OK. So this is the rehabilitation. Three seconds. Coming. OK. So, where the city of Port St. Luke issued a public call for tenders for professional services for the rehabilitation of Samuel Moskovich Arena and awarded the contract to Les Services EXP Inc., where is a change order in the amount of $28,000 plus applicable taxes for unforeseen elements of the project is required to complete the work. Be it resolved that the City Council of Cote St. Luke hereby approves the change order for additional works under project C 12 17P for professional services related to the rehabilitation of Samuel Moscovich Arena and authorizes payment for an amount not to exceed $28,000 plus taxes to Les Services EXP Inc. that the described expenses shall be financed temporarily by operational budget and that the city's treasurer had issued a uh, certificate attesting to the availability of funds to cover the described expenses. Thank you. Moved by Councillor Berkey, seconded by Councillor Kajavsky. Uh, any discussion? Um, oh, this is special some service. extra special work that was done for the arena. Uh, what's nice about this is that in this council, uh, we don't just sort of give a contingency with the contract. We make them come back to council and justify the extras, if there are any, if there's any unforeseen expenses, they have to come back and ask us. So and that's what we're doing. We're approving the extra 28,000. On okay. top of the original contract, which was for $429,500. Moved and seconded. All in favor? No one opposed. Carried unanimously. And now we move to 13B, Councilor Burke. Mm -hmm. Get a little bigger because I lost one lens of my glass today. So I don't want my glasses. Uh, be resolved, the Council, of Council hereby cancels the call for public tender for the rehabilitation of the Park Haven outdoor pools under its tender number C 07 17 C2. That City Council hereby awards a contract <coughs> to Cement Pocheté 
A. Pisin Orlea, the lowest conforming bidder under the law, pursuant to the terms of tender C-0717-18 C2 in the amount of $1,786,074 plus applicable taxes, that the Furthermore, the City Council shall consider an amount of 10 percent plus applicable taxes for any potential contingencies and extras if required that are first approved according to the City's procedure, that the described expenses shall be financed from loan bylaw 2481 and 2488 previously approved by the Ministère des Affaires Municipales, and that the Treasurer's certificate has been issued attesting the availability of funds to cover the described expenses. So. Would like to call, uh, Burko? Yes. Seconded by Councillor Pajaski. Go ahead for discussion. Councillor. Okay, so I just want to explain that uh, we went out to tender the first time uh, for structural restoration of the pool and other uh, renovations. And um, we, the, what happened? Why did we run her off? I don't remember. Just a second. Why did we cancel the first one? Because we added shade structures, light fire I think, we, I think we changed the scope. We changed, okay, the, we scope. changed yeah. the scope. Okay. So we changed the scope and then we went out to tender again. And now we've gone out to tender again and we did get a lowest conforming bid of 1786000 for the work of uh, structural restoration, replacement of earth filters, installation of a heat pump, supply and installation of shade structures and replacement of the lifeguard chairs, um, amongst other things. Uh, and replace, it's basically a revamping and renovation of the, the outdoor pool and also the, uh, the, the waiting, waiting pool, area. which is going to be new and improved. Very new and improved. The Very splash, new and improved splash with a splash, splash pad and everything else. Yeah. Okay, moved and seconded. All in favor? No opposed? Carried unanimously, and now we move to item 13C, Councillor Burke. Okay, sorry. It's very funny how I lost my glasses today. To tell you that, I went down an elevator. We went down an elevator shaft. 397. <laughs> not, not an elevator. Not an elevator shaft in Cotillac. No, elevator shaft in. In old Montreal. Okay. Um, where is the City of Cote Saint Luc issued a public call for tenders for the management of the city water and sewer systems and awarded a two year contract to CMO for the period of January 1st, 2018 to December 31st, 2019 with three year options uh, contract? What? Whoa. Lost it. Sorry. Um, <coughs> let's do it again. Be it resolved, City Cote St. Luke Council hereby approves a change order for additional works under Project C-11-17-22 for services related to the inspection and maintenance of the City's three pump stations and authorizes payment to CMO for an amount not to exceed $15,875 plus applicable taxes per year for a total amount of $31,750 for the two years of the contract that the above mentioned expenses shall be paid out of the fee service portion of the contract and the city reserves the right to include this change order in the contract if the three year options are exercised. That the city's general counsel be in is hereby authorized to sign the service proposal in regards to the services included in the above mentioned change order. Okay. Seconded by Councillor Kovac. Any discussion? Yeah, so I just want to explain that we have this annual contract, uh, well, two-year contract with uh, CMO, and we've just added this extra service to maintain the, the pump stations at approximately $15,000 each. So it'll be an, an extra uh, amount, as I mentioned, of $31,750 for the, for the two years of the contract. So that's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Anyone opposed? David. I didn't hear that. I'm sorry. 
Pardon me? We're voting. No, no, it's still on the CMO? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We're voting on the okay. All in favor. on the contract for the pump stations, Cote St. Luke, Cavendish, and Westminster. Okay, so carried unanimously. We move to item 14A. Council Bruton. Okay. 14A. Okay. Over there. Approval of purchase of a portion of a city owned lane. Jason to 5627 and 5629. Do we have a map? No. Be resolved. City Council hereby accepts the offer to purchase by Antonio Molinaro of the city owned lane pedestrial number 6194536, adjacent to 5626 and 5629 Wolseley Avenue. Principal property owned by Mr. Molinaro. That's 5627 and 5629 Wolseley. Okay, sorry. Owned by Mr. Molinaro. That the purchase price <coughs> of the secondary property is the total amount based on the 2017 municipal valuation of $45.80 per square foot for 900.58 square feet for the part of the lane behind Civic Address 5627 Wolseley and $53.89 per square foot for 300.19 square feet for the part of the lane behind Civic Address 5629 Wolseley for a total purchase price of $57,423.79 plus applicable taxes. That the conditions of purchase shall include a disclaimer of all express and implied contractual and statutory guarantees with the purchaser purchasing the secondary property on an as-is, where-is, basis completely free and clear of the city, uh, B, that the obligation of the purchaser to pay all applicable taxes related to this purchase, including land surveyor costs, notarial fees, publication costs, and the cost of providing two originals or certified true copies of the published deed of sale to the city, and C, the obligation of the purchaser at the purchaser's expense to promptly resubdivide the secondary property into three lots with the purchaser's principal property. That the City Council hereby authorize City General Council to enter into a purchase agreement with the purchaser outlining the conditions enumerated above and to negotiate and execute on the City's behalf a notarial deed of sale incorporating the aforesaid terms. Moved by Councillor Berku, seconded by Councillor Kajowski. Any discussion? Councillor Berku? Um, stay forward. It's the sale of a lane. Of a lane. lane. He's purchasing the lane behind his two properties. I don't know why he has to subdivide. That's it. But he just consolidated. Oh. He basically has a bad adjacent lane. And, a, and consolidate with his own. Yeah. Okay. So why do you call it subdivided? It should, it should be, be a dashable operation. It should be. Correct. It, yeah, it shouldn't be subdivided. It should well, be consolidated. Correct. But he's going to do both. He's going to consolidate and then subdivide. Um, because he's going to merge the the two plus the city land into one and then subdivide the three. Not so. Oh. He's going to keep one mass lot. But you know what, just to be sure. No, he's going to convert it to three. It says re-subdivision of the properties oh, okay. into three lots. Park tax. I thought it's into three. Yeah. So then, federal park, park, park plan. That's why there will be a park tax on it. Yeah. Okay. Whether he'll subdivide park, first or, or there'll consolidate. There'll be a park I mean, tax I mean, when, that's order of operation. He when he that's does a, the subdivision. That's a mathematical discussion. Anyway, which comes Moved and seconded. Uh, All in favor? Anyone opposed? Carried unanimously. We move to the site planning and architectural integration program. Part of the meeting. Okay. Councilor Bruca, 14.1A. Yeah. I'm, I'm there. I'm there. McMurray? Yes, I am. Um, okay. So, be it resolved, the site planning and architectural integration programs received April 18th, 2018, showing elevations of four temporary prefab classrooms to be installed in the school area on lot 1053257 at 5621 McMurray and prepared by TLA Architect for the Planning Advisory Committee meeting of May 1st, 2018, be approved for a period of two years according to the provisions of Chapter 4 of Bylaw 2217 of the City of Cote St. Luke. Moved by Councillor Berkeley, seconded by Councillor, who wants to second it? 
Councillor Erdely, any discussion? Okay, so. Uh, Councillor Burkle first. So this is uh, the school uh, at McMurray, uh, L'Ecole uh, Mosaïque. Mosaïque. That. Uh, no, it's not Les Amis du Monde. No, it's Mosaïque. It's Mosaïque. I think it's Mosaïque because I think Les Amis du Monde is. Uh, Les Amis du Monde is on that. Yeah. 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 Okay. So. Um, this is a school that is required now to integrate uh, approximately 80, 80 more students uh, that are um, newly immigrant, immigrated to they're, they're either they're refugees or they're some temporary. are refugees. Anyway, they're new. They're newly arrived, newly arrived in Canada and in Quebec, and uh, they need to go to school. And so the school board uh, has asked the council, this council and a few other councils across the island to allow for this temporary um, construction on the site uh, in order to set up the prefab classrooms. We um, are proposing to allow them for two years and after the two years the, the school board will have to uh, ask to resubmit uh, to get permission. We don't want it to be a permanent uh, construction, but we do understand, at least uh, I do understand, that uh, this is a fairly urgent request, and so we are allowing for temporary classrooms to be installed in their yard next to their school, <coughs> and they'll be connected to the school uh, in the most professional way possible. It's you see, nice. it, you I mean, see it on, you see it up there. Do you have the next picture of the temporary switch, classrooms uh, so we can show people what they're going to look yeah. like? Yeah. They're pretty, they're not like the barracks in Wager from the 1960s. <laughs> they're pretty modern type of structures that almost look like they're permanent, although they're temporary. You can show the inside of one on the next page if you, if you go. Yeah, they look pretty, pretty good. Mm -hmm. So that's my uh, explanation. I yes. Just yes. We wanted to apply in the term of two years, saying, for example, effective tonight or, or whatever the two year period is. I, um, I, I think it should be the school year end. I would say I, two full, I would I say think, two school years. I think it should be two years from the time that they start, that they're, they're ready for usage. For usage. Okay. Okay, so if they're ready for use in September of whatever year. September. September. Yeah, September. The time they're being used. Yeah. So they start being used. Okay. Okay, Councillor Kovac. Okay, Mr. Mayor, I didn't, I didn't prepare an, right. I didn't prepare any kind of eloquent presentation, but when this first came to me, um, the request, this school already underwent an expansion. And what we're seeing here is not just 80 random children, but 80 children, which will mean at least two more school buses, into a very tight residential area. And it's kind of unfair to, I feel, to the neighborhood and the secondary issue behind all this is that it's politically motivated because this has become a sort of called hidden linguistic thing. We have underused facilities in the Lester B. Pearson School Board and the EMS Board across the island of Montreal where these children could easily be accommodated in a regular classroom. You want to hire French teachers and put them in an English environment? I don't understand what the issue is for Quebec that maybe these kids would come in contact with English speaking children, but why would we shove in and shoehorn in 80 children into a place that was already expanded just about two years ago into a tight, tight area, bringing in more school buses when we have underused facilities across the island of Montreal. This is nothing but a political downloading which the Quebec government has been really good at if not downloading it onto municipalities and onto school boards. And I say we should shove it right back and give it right back to them and say no and tell them to put them into buildings that are being underused today. Thank you, Councillor Kovac. Councillor Torchman and then Councillor Erdely. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, two, two, uh, I have two motivating factors in voting for this. Um, one is uh, the, the nature of the request. If they were to request a permanent structure to be built uh, in this, uh, at the school, uh, they would have the permission to do so based on their usage uh, and square footage. So that's one. And two is the nature of the request. Uh, the temporary relief of um, the students that are coming in, I think, is a, a valid request. And being that it's a temporary two-year uh, permission by the city, 
um, I'll be voting in favor of this. Thank you, Councilor Torchman. Councilor Erdely. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, well, I do agree with Councilor Kovac on a few of her points. I have to disagree on some. I do agree that I think residents or new immigrants to Quebec should have more rights, including the right to choose whether they want to send their children to English or French schools. Uh, given the, the paradigm of the provincial government, I don't see that changing in the near future. Uh, and obviously, because of that, they have to, we have to make sure they find a school. Uh, where I do also want, where I do want to disagree is on the point as to the location of where the children are coming from. Some of them are coming by bus. Many of them are coming from District 4, or coming from the village area. If one is driving on Westminster in the morning around 7.30 or so, you'll see hundreds of children mm -hmm. making the walk from the Kingsley, Trent, uh, Adelbert, Ashdale, and so on, walking along Coatsillick Road, along Kingsley, and so on, Bailey, coming up Westminster and walking to Ecole La Mosaic. So uh, it is a possibility that there may be more buses, but the, the majority of the children, I would say, uh, and speaking to the principal of the school, the uh, majority of the children are coming from that area, and most of them are actually We're walking. talking about 80 children with refugee status. That's not I, living, but, not necessarily but I'm, I'm refugee saying status. My, my understanding is a lot of them are actually living okay. in the area, and, and, it's, and I can mention uh, when going door to door mm -hmm. in District 4, uh, District 4 has one of the highest numbers of residents, one of the lowest numbers of <coughs> voters. Right because there is a huge number, and I, I don't have the numbers in front of me, there's a huge number of people living in Cote Saint District 4 in particular that are residents but not citizens mm -hmm. yet. Or, I mean, obviously they have different statuses. I, I'd have to defer to the mayor for the exact immigration status of them, but of uh, the different residents. But the point is they're not yet citizens, um, a large percentage of them. And, and I, my, part of my goal, of course, is to make sure that their needs are met as well. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak? No, uh, yeah. No, uh, Mitch, uh, Councillor Kajaski. Just very briefly, I just want to echo the statement of uh, Councillor Kovac um, that I, I appreciate the fact that we uh, may not be able to change provincial law and change the world here in Cote St. Luke, but we do have this platform in which we can express our concerns. And in this case, uh, a provincial law that just does not make sense. We're going to be spending money, our tax dollars, on prefab structures that are not required should these children be allowed into the, into the immersion system. And there is room in the immersion system at the MSV, at the Les Peters School Board, at private schools uh, that we can be taking advantage of and not be spending this money. So, Okay, for, for, uh, I'll just make the last comment because nobody else does. From what I understand, there's not tremendous amounts of space available in schools nearby in the English Montreal School Board from the information I have, and I have some good resources and contacts. So, uh, yeah, there's not a ton of space, and we're not going to change Bill 101, although it's a good time to bring up the, the topic. Right now, we're dealing with the issue of ensuring that children, many of whom live in the neighborhood, uh, receive an education, and this request will allow those kids to do so. We know many of them, we were told, are here on a temporary status, meaning they're applying for some type of immigration status, whether it's a refugee or another form. If it's denied, they'll have to leave. But while they are here, they need to be able to go to school. So um, we're doing what we can to accommodate them. And therefore, you know, you know, my recommendation, although I won't, I don't believe I'm going to have to break any tie, would be to support uh, this request. So move by <laughs> Councillor Berku, and it was seconded, I believe, by was it seconded? Councillor Early. Councillor Early. Yes. So all in favor? And anyone opposed? Uh, Councillor Kobeck and Councillor Kajaski dissenting. And now we move on to item 14.1b, which as we spoke before to all those people from Hoover Academy is deferred, 5700 <coughs> Kellert. And now we move on to 5702 <coughs> Park Haven. Did you Councillor... Speak to the that we wanted to defer them to? 20 something. The end of the school year. Uh, <laughs> 2020? Uh, uh, it's hard to know at this point. Okay. Well, so we know we have to do so we have to put it to a date? Yeah. Yeah. So otherwise, we have to. I would say. Otherwise, we have to republish. So I would. So can say we do it to, uh, August, September? Yeah. September. Well. August. Okay. Give them to August. Give first. them hope. Defer to August. <laughs> People go. Not to not July. July. There's a July meeting. There's a July meeting and August meeting, right? Right. When's, so when's, when's the July August meeting? meeting? Let's see. I think it's better for September, really. No, yes, it, it doesn't matter. People go away. Just keep deferring. It doesn't matter. It doesn't cost you. But people go away. It doesn't cost. I just want to see when the meeting is in August. If we, if we uh, August 13th. 
Oh, August 13th. Oh, August 13th. Mm. No, but even not, July, we could have put Not the July, not. No. Everything's no. away. We're no, it doesn't matter. No, we but we won't deferred. be ready. We won't be ready for having a public meeting. Yeah, the public, yeah, but go to okay. PAC, then you have to have a public meeting. We're not going to be ready in July. Mm -hmm. Okay. August 13th. August 13th. We're not going to be ready. Okay. Uh, now we go to 5792 Park Haven, Council Berkeley. Okay. Uh, 5792 Park Haven. <coughs> so, be resolved that the site planning and architectural integration programs received July 21st, 2017, showing the construction of a multifamily 10 story dwelling plus penthouse on lot 50. 5505094 at 5792 Park Haven and prepared by Ceroli and Palumbo Architects following the Planning Advisory Committee meeting of June 29, 2017 and the in-committee meeting held on July 17, 2017 be approved according to the provisions of Chapter 14 of Bylaw 2217 of the City of Cote St. Louis. Moved by Councilor Berkeley, seconded by... Councilor Kajowski. Okay. Any discussion, Councilor? So Bruce? this is the revised perspective showing the construction of a 10-story multifamily building uh, on Park Avon and uh, the corner of Trinity. This site plan was approved at the time that we granted the demolition. Um, uh, Metro Schechter, is that correct? Well, yes. Okay. Um, okay. All right. Now, the the permit has already been granted or not yet? Yes. Where? But isn't this the subject of the injunction? Uh, no, it's subject to the injunction with the fees. No, these are okay, yeah. so the permit was granted. The, the okay. permit was okay. granted. Fine. There was a, um, it was granted temporarily because we were waiting right. for certain okay. plans. The plans were submitted and received and deemed. Uh, do you deemed approved. approved. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So this is the plan that was submitted and deemed approved. Okay. So this is in accordance with the plans <coughs> for the building which is presently under construction. I'm going to ask a question. Correct. Thank you. Point of order? Yes. So I don't have any updated minutes after the meeting of the PAC, which recommended at the time not to approve, if you'll read carefully yes, the minutes of the PAC. They're in the, they're on Where is four, the 434 of the uh, digital, digital version, version which I don't have, which we have, and it says in committee meeting of the Municipal Council held on July 17, 2017, ah. at 5.30 p.m. Okay, so in future, could we have that in the you paper? You don't have that? No, okay. and that's why I'm asking the question. It says the meeting no. was preceded by, okay, minutes of the Planning Advisory Committee, Approved as table. No. You have it. Yes, you're right. I have it. Right. Uh, yep. But that's 2017 July. This is from June 29th. Yeah. Okay. No, no, it's here. Minutes of the planning. Yes. It's in the. It's in the paper version also. I'm looking to see it. I it's don't on the see bottom of the page. June 29th. It's the bottom of the page, the top of the next page. Right. What I have here is who was present. No. And then I have minutes of the June 29th, 2017. Yeah. So what's after That's that? The pack. What's after that? Here, in, he pasted it in. Yeah, I only have who was present. Yeah. You go here, this is June 29th. Yeah, she's asking for the committee minutes. I'm asking minutes. for the committee minutes. Of uh, July 17th. Over... Yeah, exactly, which I don't have. You have it? No. So as long as you yeah. have it, yeah. no, record. I don't. Well, then I don't have an update to tell me that yeah, Council overrided whatever PAC said here. There's nothing to, to support that. And I don't want to say yes to something that isn't there to support. I asked it. Charles about this before we came in. So then let's defer it. Well, there's no urgency. I think it is a little bit urgent. But you're, you're passing something that you don't have documentation no, I to support. No, I asked Charles about this before we went yeah, in. Uh, so, well, that's not good enough. Okay, fine. Looking I mean, for it. You don't have the. I don't have supporting documents to tell me that what PAC no, made a recommendation that council overrided. But if you see the the if you if you go back to um, who's 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 managing the uh, we should the display here. Support. Could you just go back for a second? Okay, one more. You can read plans like that? No, no, it's all the plans. One more. Uh, on the bottom of that, can you raise that up? Because there's something written on the bottom. 
on the on our copy. Okay, you don't have it. No. It says as per the in committee meeting of July seventeenth, two thousand seventeen. And what does it say? It's it, it shows, just says as per. What does right. it confirm? Does it say anything? It just shows this <coughs> this perspective. This yeah, is the perspective. But it doesn't address what was the what the PAC okay. had suggested. I hear so you. You I'm asking you for support. All right. To okay. support oh, to support okay. your, your with July. your motion. I, I, I mean I'm looking at the full minutes. From after July? After June 29th? Of the meeting of June 29th. I have the I have the June 29th. But you see and the, the minutes 17. of June 29th are has to be July 17th, 2017. No, I have it already. And what did they okay, say? So Stephen, can read it. You know he has everything. Stephen, okay. read it to us. It's the in committee of July 17th, 2017. Well, I have that. But it had to be public, or this is the public. And this is the public. So I'd like to hear what the in committee supported or didn't support and what the recommendations from PAC, if they were supported or not. So I have here, it was item, let me just make sure I'm reading the right item. Item 1A. Um, 1A, Park Davis. Yeah. So I have, let me just make sure, see if it's. Yeah, so it, it keeps, it, uh, I don't know. It's actually, sorry, it's the same, it's actually the same thing. It doesn't have more than that, because then it goes on to item 1B after, which so is. So that's not good 56, enough. 5615 Park Davis. Because now you're passing something where it said not to recommend, and I don't have anything that says we did recommend. It's, a, it's the same document, actually. It's not, it's copy and paste. It says on item 11, on, pay, on the second page, if you read it, it says approved as tabled except for items 1A, 1B. Item 1A, the in committee requested the following modification of the Park Haven Tower proposal. Sections of brick that were changed from black, gray to red should be changed back to black, gray. Windows should be added. Checks should be reintroduced. The zero setback on the penthouse was refused the revised timeline. I mean, yeah. I. Yeah, that's it. You're going to get that's, the yeah, that's what I have in the, that's that's all we have. the minutes. Nothing else. I mean, if you're not, if you don't feel comfortable that that's this reflects, this Just reflects what, the site minutes. plan, then, but it, at the bottom of my thing, it says, as per the IC meeting of July 17th, 2017. And we have the plans in here. Do you have this? Do you have this picture? Yep, I have that picture too. Do you have that? Of course we have it. Yeah. What, can you see what it says? As per. I don't see a problem. Okay. Okay. Councilor Burko, did you read it? I did. You did, you did, so it's moved. And seconded by Councilor Kajafi. Any other discussion? All in favor? Okay. I'll be okay with it. Okay. No one's opposed. Now we move on to D. Mark Chagall. Two Mark, favorite streets. Mark Chagall. This Chigal. is another construction. This is Albert so, Fondren paying attention. It's her street. Be it resolved that the site planning and architectural integration program received September 18th, 2017, showing the construction of a 12 story multifamily dwelling, phase two on lot 154867. And one five six forty eight six. Uh, it's the same number. One five six forty eight six seven. So the numbers. You think? The same number. No, it should say on lot number one five six forty eight sixty seven. At 5887 Mark it's, Chagall. It's correct in the French and version. And prepared by Neuf Architects architect for the version. Planning Advisory Committee, meeting of May 1st, 2018, be approved according to the provisions of Chapter 14 of Bylaw 2217 of the City of Cote St. Louis. And just. Councillor Berku, seconded by Councillor Kajowski. Oh. Okay. Discussion? Yeah, it's, so this, sorry, is, well, this just is Tower 2. Tower 2. Tower two. Well, while we're correcting typos. Yes. On the French version, it says May 1st, 2017. The English version says May 1st, 2018. So just maybe to, to correct that, which I assume is May 1st, 2018. Yeah, no. Okay. So just. We, oh, you mean the last meeting we had? Yes, yeah, so I'm saying just to correct that for the minutes. Yes, yeah, that was the last meeting but, of the so PAC. Just for the purpose of the record, so that we have. 
Correct. And in the English version, um, the law was repeated twice, so it's on lot 1, 5, 6, 4, 8, 6, 7, and 50, 87, Mark Chagall. Correct. Thank you very, very much. Okay. So, um, th here the PAC unanimously recommended to approve this project mm -hmm. phase two. So we have no issues there. And um, this is basically phase two of the Mark Chagall project. You can read all about it in uh, Mike's, Mike's blog. <laughs> uh, phase one is, I guess, almost complete, Mike? Yeah, it's pretty much. And, yes, uh, it's there. Nice and now we're on there. phase two, as presented to us last September, but approved uh, by the PAC at our meeting in May and um, to, to be approved tonight. That's it. I read it. You read it. You read it. So moved by and seconded all in favor. Jeff seconded it all in favor. Perfect. So that's done and we're deferring 14.2A, which is the Hebrew Academy, to August 13th, the minor exemption, and then we go to item 15, Mitch Kajaski. Councilor Kajaski. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Be it resolved that Council take the following stance in view of any agglomeration council meetings to be held in July 2018 as follows. To authorize the mayor or his duly authorized replacement to make any decisions he deems necessary and in the best interest of the city of Cote St. Luke and its residents regarding the items on the agenda at the agglomeration council meetings to be held in July 2018 based on the information to be presented during those meetings. There's no meeting in the agglomeration in July 2018. They, they, don't, they, they take a break in July. There's no meeting. Sorry. There's no meeting in July. They don't, they don't meet in July. End of June and... End of August. Yeah. Okay. So you can put it for August, but there's no meeting for August. Well, the lottery would be August once we've noticed the same if necessary, or if necessary. If necessary. Okay. If necessary. If necessary. Thank you. All right. All right. Okay. Well, just say if necessary. That would be just a special meeting to have a Okay. Maybe we should follow the agro now. If necessary. Okay. So moved and uh, seconded by. Thank you, Councilor Kovac, all in favor of the, uh, giving me authorization to do something at the meeting that's not happening. <laughs> all in favor, carried unanimously, and now we move on to item 16, Councilor. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Whereas the Council of the City of Cook St. Luke intends to join the growing international movement for freedom of expression and oppose the cruel punishment inflicted on Mr. Raf Badawi by the judicial system of Saudi Arabia. Whereas the government of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia has chosen to ignore both the demand for the release of Rauf Badawi and the renunciation of the inhuman punishment of 1,000 lashes. Whereas the family of Rauf Badawi has taken refuge in Sherbrooke, Quebec, a city which has conferred on him the status of an honorary citizen. Whereas in October 2015, the Parliament of the European Union awarded Mr. Badawi the prestigious Sakharov Prize highlighting his struggle for freedom of expression and fundamental rights, whereas Amnesty International and other organizations working on the promotion of peace and democracy have called on governments and citizens to continue their <coughs> efforts to secure the release of Mr. Raif Badawi. Um, be it resolved, if I can scroll down, that the Council of the City of Cote St. Luke declares its support for the immediate release of Mr. Raif Badawi and that the Council of City Cote St. Luke requests that the Government of Canada condemn both the decision and the sentence imposed on Mr. Badawi and that the Government of Canada exercise all its power and influence for his immediate release from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Moved by Councillor Burku, seconded by Councillor Kajowski. I just want to yeah, I just want to mention that um, most recently at the last Council meeting, uh, the City of Montreal um, did bestow upon Mr. Badawi the um, title of honorary citizen of uh, Montreal. Uh, the town Council of Hampstead did the same. I um, consulted with um, the noted uh, human rights uh, advocate, uh, Erwin Kotler, who is a constituent and is a uh, strong supporter of uh, freedom uh, of expression and uh, liberties for all peoples across the world. And he has, in fact, uh, encouraged us to pass this resolution. So um, based on the, that uh, context and history, we're passing this resolution. 
and we hope that this will just be another voice added to uh, the, um, the movement uh, to uh, get Mr. Badawi's release and uh, so he can be reunited with his family in, uh, in Quebec. Thank you. So we moved and seconded it and everybody voted for it. So we're all good. We didn't vote. We yet. didn't vote? No, we didn't no. vote. Okay, all in favor. No one's opposed and it carries unanimously and second question period. Anybody have any questions? Go ahead. One more question. Very proud of that fire pit, right? Yeah, uh, it. Right, uh, it's city manager uh, Abramovich. <laughs> um, it, it's an artistic addition to the site. People. Doesn't it cost money to keep it running? Natural I, I gas. It's, quite, it's very, very it's little. When it's not on, we get more complaints than when it is on. Yes, <laughs> people want to see it. It's part of the, supposedly part of the beauty of the <laughs> Imagination Park area. Okay. Okay, uh, any other questions? If not, uh, move to adjournment. Right. Councillor Kovac, seconded by Councillor Kajavsky, all in favor. All in Councilor favor. Kerr, we're adjourned. Totally Thank you all for favor. coming.